shit ain't overnight, that's a whole lot of flips. This shit ain't overnight, took a whole lot of trips. This shit ain't overnight, gotta learn and get your grip. This shit ain't come overnight, it just look like this. This shit ain't overnight, been through so much shit in my life. The gun colder the ice, that blade sharp cut you like a knife. Always had my own little thing, letting your body feed me with a slice. We was grinding all night just to make them turn over the sights. I had to sacrifice, I had to cut some ties, minimize. I had to realize, I use my real eyes, see through the lies. Club going live, change guys, say FBI. Notify the guys, I swear they had the nerve, they got was I. This shit ain't overnight, that's a whole lot of flips. This shit ain't overnight, took a whole lot of trips. This shit ain't overnight, gotta learn and get your grip. This shit ain't come overnight, it just look like this. Blood, sweat, and tears, I lost peers to face my fears. Learn to protect my grip, living on the edge so many years. When you live in life in a fast lane, gotta know when to shift the gears. Gotta decode everything I hear in my ears, so surprise. This shit ain't overnight, that's a whole lot of flips. This shit ain't overnight, took a whole lot of trips. This shit ain't overnight, gotta learn and get your grip. This shit ain't come overnight, it just look like this. This shit ain't overnight, that's a whole lot of flips. This shit ain't overnight, took a whole lot of trips. This shit ain't overnight, gotta learn and get your grip. This shit ain't come overnight, it just look like this. This shit ain't overnight, been through so much shit in my life. The gun colder the ice, that blade sharp cut you like a knife. Always had my own little thing, letting your body feed me with a slice. We was grinding all night just to make them turn over the sights. I had to sacrifice, I had to cut some ties, minimize. I had to realize, I use my real eyes, see through the lies. Club going live, change guys, say FBI. Notify the guys, I swear they had the nerve, they got was I. This shit ain't overnight, that's a whole lot of flips. This shit ain't overnight, took a whole lot of trips. This shit ain't overnight, gotta learn and get your grip. This shit ain't come overnight, it just look like this. Blood, sweat, and tears, I lost peers to face my fears. Learn to protect my grip, living on the edge so many years. When you live in life in a fast lane, gotta know when to shift the gears. Gotta decode everything I hear in my ears, so surprised. This shit ain't overnight, that's a whole lot of flips. This shit ain't overnight, took a whole lot of trips. This shit ain't overnight, gotta learn and get your grip. This shit ain't come overnight, it just look like this. Going on, that face show in 2002. Five, seven. Let's they were all Diddy, Autumn were chilling in New York, like hanging out, like in a group. And Diddy randomly asked a guy he just signed. I, I ain't gonna say no names though, right. but he just asked a guy that he just signed, jokingly though, out loud, like they're in, like us, just chilling. Would you would you suck a D for a million dollars? Some shit be jokes. Some shit be. Well, yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. That's supposed to motivate yeah. you. So, I know you've seen all the crazy stuff that's been going on with P. Diddy. Man! What oh. is your um His opinion, take? Yeah, your take on all of this. Man, it's, it's just sickening, man. Like, everybody not, everybody not lying. 
Everybody All these allegations, everybody not lying, man. And I used to look up to Diddy. You know, Sean Combs, Sean Cotton, Sean Carter. Let's, right. Jay-Z, Diddy, like we all got the same SC shit. I know. But I, used to, <laughs> I used to use that as like fuel as like an executive. Yeah. But just like seeing all that shit is just like, man, that nigga is sick. He's a man, that, but I see some people on um, um like Glasses Malone went live the other day, yesterday. The glasses. And um he was talking about like, yeah, they're trying to get him for sex trafficking, but how is this man? He's like, I've been to his parties, I don't see none of the stuff that they're talking about. How is this man sex trafficking? And the only thing I could think about, you know, because you know, when we think about sex trafficking back in the day, think about oh, you kidnap somebody yeah. and then you but if you look up the meaning of sex, sex trafficking, that's not really what it is. And it changed when the R. Kelly situation came because that's what mm. they also got him for. Yeah. So, you know, they tweak stuff to try to get yep. you. If you underage and you fraudulently, you know, get her, you transport her from here to here to here, even if you just taking her out, but mm. you, you know, men be lying to women and women be lying to men. Yeah. And they use that against you and, you know, and put it under that bracket. Are they saying that he was flying girls out? Like, underage yeah. girls? That's it, I don't even the know the come, whole... The feds already got... 95% of... Conv- Here is how you can generate all these ad creatives yeah. under one minute. So, the first thing you're going to... Conviction rate. See? So, so, something that we don't even know probably didn't happen. Man. And why would they have his sons in handcuffs sitting outside? I heard they took a couple of men. Now, this is all alleged. Now, don't try to get me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I sent you a video, too. I saw it on TikTok where he... Drugs and violence. He said this, he had gray hair and stuff, so this had to be something recently. It was this white younger girl. Did you see that one where I'm um, underage that he said he adopted and his sons was yep, in the background or whatever? I saw, that, on I saw Twitter. that and they were flowing that around like, you know, yeah, you adopt her, but like they're trying to insinuate like, yeah, you what, what are you doing? Because she was homeless and yeah. stuff like that. And he even tried to clarify like, no, I adopted her just like Angelina Jolie adopted, you know, black yeah. kids and this person, you know, it's nothing like what people make it seem, yeah. but you know, people gonna take it there. Man, I be hearing so many stories about Diddy. Like, I ain't gonna say his name, but he told me like in 2002, they were all Diddy, all them were chilling in New York, like hanging out, like in a group. And Diddy randomly asked a guy he just signed. I, I ain't gonna say no names though, right. but he just asked a guy that he just signed, jokingly though, out loud, like they're in, like us, just chilling. Would you would you suck a D for a million dollars? Like like that. Mm. He asked him that. Wow. I think he, it's, he that, asked him that. That like, power, just that to, money and the just power. Just to see, like, joke, like, he asked him jokingly, but, like, you Is know. He willing? Damn. Yeah. Damn. Like, I'm in, in, like, behind closed doors. No, did he? Uh, behind closed doors. <laughs> um, I, I, if you'll do that for a million dollars, type it in the comments. I've always heard like crazy shit about Diddy. Always. always. Nothing never comfortable. Nothing never comfortable. Always like some 2 a.m. Damn. Always some some late night after the after party. After 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 party like shit. Did but you- how do straight, not straight people, how do straight individuals, as in like stand up individuals, mm. not you know, stand up to him and say, yo, that's wrong or this is this, whatever. I think a lot of, I think he, I think, I think people like that go after people in survival mode. And what I mean by that is like people with power, they go after people who, who want opportunity, need opportunity, maybe be broke at the time. And people look at Diddy as an opportunity. So a lot of these people don't say no because, or they're scared to say no because they're like, well, damn, if I do go over there, maybe I can get, a hip song or maybe I can get auditions in this new show or so I feel like people with power they they know which people to go with which people to fuck with which people they know don't have money right now that you know mm-hmm. like they, those people they I don't that's one thing about I don't even go to the club I don't go to none of that shit but if they do that I don't, fuck don't with come back shit. don't come back you voluntarily Once yes, you say no you voluntarily okay Yes, I'm vulnerable. Yes, I need money. And you come to me and you offer whatever. And I'm going to say, okay, yes, I'm going to do this because I want money. Don't come back years later on and say, well, I you agree. raped me. No, yeah, you did. Because I, I, bo- I agreed to whatever situation it was that I you were offering. You, yeah, me. once you did it, it's like, yeah, you did it and, you know, whatever. But, um, no, nah, that's, yeah. that's a great point. I want to, you know, I, I got a beef with you. Damn. Yeah, yeah, I, that don't even sound right. 
You know what I'm saying? Damn. We went, we went. I'm trying to wait. My mom yeah, raised yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we went, we went viral. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Breakfast okay. Club called out Boss Talk 101. <laughs> Columbus Short uh, recently did an interview with Boss Talk 101 podcast. Uh, what, who was wait this? a minute. Uh, uh, who else? 50 Cent posted us. It went to 3 million. Academics. Quick. Academics posted what? us. The Vlad. Shade Room posted us. Vlad. Vlad posted us. All behind Columbus Short when he said, on Boss Talk 101, he called me over at 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, he did it call just me. They asked, like, who is this? It's Sean. I'm like, Sean? It's Puff. I'm like, oh, what's good? You're talking low like that? Talking low. So I was... <laughs> So I was like, hey, what's good? I said, what's cracking? He said, ah, oh, we didn't see you, we didn't see you tonight at the BET Awards. We didn't see you tonight. He said, uh, You're checking uh, in. He said, what, 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 what you what you doing? I was like, oh man, I'm at the crib. He said, Oh yeah, we over here at the um he said, I'm over here at the um the Beverly Hills Hotel. I said, Oh, for real? So who over there? Just me. That's both talk. And what's so crazy? <laughs> When I just said the 2 a.m. shit, I see you got that on both but, but look though. And Say Cheese didn't post us. But, no, no, no. That's why I miss but, no, no, no. See, I, I watched <laughs> it. I don't think Say Cheese be posting people like nah, that. Nah, I man, I, I post a lot of people. You do? Yeah, I... I Nobody in Dallas posted us. No, but the world that, posted us. Oh, nobody in Dallas. Even Breakfast Club bro, posted bro, us. Bro, no, look, look, look. I, I watched that, but... All you had to do was just text me, like, bro, post that. It's everywhere. I don't know. We don't ever nobody. tell nobody to post I need to do that. Yes. You should have told me that. You I'm about to yes no. be my mentor. You about be. I want to invite you to join us in a free cloud training exclusive to IT professionals, where we will work together to migrate an on-premises application from scratch to a cloud environment with top providers. A mentor. You're helping hey, me. I'm gonna call you right back, bro. <laughs> you you supposed to be helping me. I didn't know Whoa. that part. No, I did watch it. <laughs> I did watch it, but I just damn, bro. Shout out to Jess Hilarious. Yeah. She must yeah. got a little boss talk 101 because she say on boss talk 101. That was the first time we ever been on there like that. Mm. Man, that was that. crazy. That's big. That's bro. huge. Everybody that's called big. AD called me from no yeah. well, X no jumper chameleon. Yeah. He was like, Man, E, that's you said big. the same you should thing. Be to proud of that. Dallas Global said he didn't post us either. I told Dallas Global oh, nobody posts bro, us from the city. When nobody. You, when I tell you. News. But I know you would have posted for me. Yeah, if I called yeah. you. Hey, hey, this shit going everywhere, bro. <laughs> I, I didn't know think we had to. Was. I didn't think that we had to. It's I just, thought that people just see it and be like, yeah, oh, yeah, but it's just so much news and so many outlets and. It's, I know you would have yeah, posted, bro. Because people wonder how we get Sean Cotton all the time. Yeah, it's like you, everybody. You don't. I don't even bother you, and no, everybody don't get mad at me. A lot of people be trying to get a hold of you through me, yeah. and I won't do it because I'd be like, if it don't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. But I probably I could be wrong. But a lot of times I don't bother you because yeah. I'll be like, eh, I'm not messing with him about that. No, but if it's that. something that's that I don't think fits yeah. what you would even mm-hmm. deal with. You right. know what I mean? Like I watch a channel and I watch things that you do. I'm like, he not for, I'm not for the bother. But I want you to understand when I call you, it's about something. Exactly. And that's what I a lot of people believe. And that's what I told uh Yellow Beezy. A lot of people waste favors just because they know they can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like he was like, Why you he said on the show, why you never let me do a feature for any of your artists? I said, because it's the, when the time is right, when, my, when I call you, you're going to know it's real. That's real. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to call you just because niggas will call you because they know you got money just so because they know you're not going to say no. I yeah. I'm, I, don't, I don't move like that. So you know how I am. You didn't figure me out yeah. pretty quick. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, I try to stay solid with the with the things that I do. Mm-hmm. And I know that my name stand on everything that we at exactly. Boss Talk. If I call whoever and I I, I just, I, it got to mean something. I'm like yeah. you yeah. with that. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk. This is Amazon's best kept secret, an untapped marketplace that brings in $76 million in sales. Yo, we are back. Thanks for being here. Y'all know what to do. Hit the, yeah, just, just hit it for me. Anyway, um, we're going to be talking about a music exec today that has turned his own world upside down. We're going to learn the things not to do to keep you afloat. We're going to learn how to treat people. Anyway, this is Tune D or Tune Day. I hadn't clicked it or anything, y'all. I just saw the title and I said, hmm, let's talk about it. So we're going to be learning about the real wild world of the diddler. Let's go. 
Okay, I'm telling you right now. When I want to work with Diddy, I'm going to... See, he and 50 were cool at one time. I'm going to physically put my hands on somebody for the ratings. <laughs> and yeah, that's not it. Remember that time Diddy was slapping Jay-Z like this? It could be camaraderie, maybe. Him and 50 always like that when they see each other type shit. And then, you know, 50 still always gonna talk his shit. That's just how he is. Be some good brotherly love. 50 is, is a cancer, so he's gonna, he gonna keep that shit real. I don't know, but remember that time when Justin Bieber was doing this to Odell Beckham at Diddy's party? We ain't about to watch that. Speaking of, um, Justin Bieber, right? Listen, listen, listen. Who? Justin Bieber and Will Smith's son. Look up Justin. What's that boy name? Will, Willow. Oh. Wow. Look up. Um. Ain't that funny that dude? Act. Listen. Look up um, Justin Bieber and Jaden Smith. Yeah, I think they were at Coachella. It was highly uncomfortable. Mm. I'm sorry. If I were to get greeted how they greeted, somebody gonna be sleep. Kool Aid everywhere. Mm. Anyway, let's go. Happy birthday, man. I, I, yeah, we, we party Here's that party. infamous we infamous shot, y'all. You no, know, but we you ain't never really party, you know what I'm saying? Party, right. party. And when he was asked about it, he played ignorant and foolish. We segueing into the Drink Champs interview <laughs> when you was with Nori. And he looked pissed as hell for real when he said that. Like, you really gonna bring that up? Fab and Jada and mm. everybody, they made a compilation video of you because they said you were sounding real suspect mm. on, the, on the interview. Yeah. Did you see that? Of course, nah. I didn't see it. No, nah, I didn't see it. You didn't see it. I swear to God. Oh, come yeah. on, man. You saw that whole world. Yo, and on yo, the tram. Check, check this out. When they started playing the game, the pause. Listen, it's funny he spoke on a pause game, and this whole pause game has switched to no Diddy game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ain't that a coinky dink? <laughs> Crazy. Pause game. I would definitely that came from Harlem too. By yeah, way. came from Harlem. I definitely would say some oh my oh the crowd would be like, Whoa, did he just say that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't play games, y'all know. You know what I'm saying? I'm a grown man. I don't play games. But um yeah. Did the you compilation, go? nah, I was I was coming off of being in Miami at night of party, and I don't really remember what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of did he too. I bet he doesn't remember what he was saying, playing with that pink stuff. The pink stuff. Except that his happiness is too big to fit inside the closet. I think he needs to bring it out and let it shine. I mean, he would rather put his ball of fist, but he would rather fist fight Usher over some type of milk. Back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the over the Frosted Flakes. You know what I'm saying? Before pause was invented. You know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the Frosted Flakes because he used to always get up early. <laughs> now he's one of the richest stars yo, in the world. And I'm yo, like, what, what the... Puff just say. And the details of Diddy's lawsuit has been crazy. I mean... Details pointing to him blowing up cars, several of his freak off parties with victims like working at a hotel. First, your little business could become a big business. Your business could be bigger than you dream, but you got to master a few skills. Take this time to like the video. This is some shit. Mm, mm, mm. Balconies sinks tables and even plate racks and if there was anything that had a surface they were on it too but when i saw this it was something that sounded a little too familiar uh, we're here uh with a lovely and talented jamie Fox. i don't know man cross legs them legs cross too hard Fox, jamie uh what's what's a day, man. day in the life of jamie fox what's it like in the foxhole what's it 
This is American actor and comedian Jamie Foxx on the late night show on May 16th of 2018. Because he had went to a party that was similar to the one we had just described, he had a lot to say. I would hang out and watch him throw parties. I don't think they meant sure, no, he 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 was like his, his white party. Oh, Boy, was- y'all see how he was. Oh, Lord. Look at Watch this. This is American actor. Look at him. Look at how he, he almost turned to Wanda. and comedian Jamie Foxx on the late night show on May 16th of 2018. Because he had went to a party that was similar to the one we had just described, he had a lot to say. I would hang out and watch him throw parties. Sure, he right. famously threw his, like, his, his white party. Out. Well, he would throw a party. One part, I went to Philly, followed him all the way to Philly. He threw a party and he said, yo, Playboy, this party costs a million and a half dollars. Jamie Foxx was at this party, and he described that the people he saw while he was at this party were some of the most famous people that we all knew. Here's what's crazy. The people at the party, Puff at that time had a room, Missy Elliott had a room, dun, 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 you know what I'm saying? Dun, 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 dun. And standing on the wall, nobody knew who he was. Guess who it was? It was Jay-Z. However, what Jamie Foxx was saying also sounded a little too familiar. Jay Z been partying with Diddler for a while. Mm, party parties. Another person, Keefe D, would go on to describe a disturbing party that he once went to. He said, Diddy, check Tupac this out, y'all. We're just- Look at that boy mouth, man. He can't close his mouth. M O U F F F P H. Just like couples. Puff. And Tupac was like a couple, seemed like to me. And as Keefe D struggled to explain everything that went on in that party, he ended it by saying there were a lot of weird, unexplainable, and ungodly things going on. There's just a lot of, a lot of weird shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? Shit. What was going on behind the scenes, right? What could possibly be happening at this party? What was happening at these Diddy parties? And who are these people? that were involved. As a result of this, on the day of Monday, March 25th, 2024, Diddy's house would be raided. The Department of Homeland Security conducting a raid at a house in Home Beach. Real quick, there is a dude, a uh, celebrity bodyguard, CC Big Homie or something like that. He said, man, you know when it's time to leave the parties because there are some dudes that walk in like vampires. Yeah. I'm going to make a series about bro videos because he's just exposing so many stars. He's the same one that talked about Dwight Howard in the dress. He's a walking like vampire. Mm. Phil Hills, believed to be connected to Sean Combs, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. Like Evidently, Diddy was a billionaire, rap mogul, and known all across the world. So as you might expect, Helicopter cameras were on scene Monday afternoon as dozens of federal agents simultaneously raided Diddy's mansion. They made their way towards the mansion's main entrance, broke through the house, marched in, and turned it upside down. After a few hours, a video later resurfaced showing Diddy's bedroom. I mean, it was torn apart. Wires and cords appeared to be checked. Cabinets and safes were left open. Drawers were cracked open. Boxes filled with gun ammo were broken. And even previously won Grammy Awards were left out like mere trash. Outside was paparazzis with cameras, Fox News reporting live, and many FBI agents coasted outside. I mean, Diddy was in some hot shit. And while this appeared to be one hell of a scene, it was. It seemed that they were looking for something. But what was this thing that they were looking for? Before we talk about that, we have to first see what happened after this raid, which was what happened to Diddy's private jet. Diddy's private jet. This is her. Black excellence. All black everything. All black crew. Greatest pilots in the world. Yes, sir. While feds raided Diddy's house, his private jet was flown to an island called Antigua in the Caribbean. Many questioned if Diddy was on board. Some said he was. Others said he wasn't. 
yet nobody knew. Photos obtained by ABC News capturing Combs's love air jet in Antigua. No information about who, if anyone, was on the plane. But this photo was taken. It was of Diddy's private jet, and it was posted and shared all over social media because everybody was wondering where was Diddy. Many assume where was Diddy. <clears throat> what was a jet? Oh yeah, they were down there with the um, the pink stuff. I'm gonna tell y'all some funny shit though. Diddy was in Miami. His jet. I have made. A, I'm not saying it was because of me or nothing like that, but I made a video. And I'm just like, where's Saucy at? Where's Sassy Santana? Bro, That's really what it should know. change. Is, why you does he even like be called he or she? <laughs> That's what they need to change their name to. Bro, you tripping, bro. Sassy Montana. Point blank, period. Sassy is. He gonna get on you if you keep on talking. I'm shut up. I gotta be nice. Boom, that he was on board. But while you're wanted by the feds, Antigua would be the worst place to go. This is because Antigua has extradition laws with the US against criminals. Meaning, if you were to commit a crime and you fled to Antigua, maybe thought Antigua was gonna save your ass. Antigua will talk to the US because of the law that they have, extradition laws. They will ship your ass right back to the United States to serve your sentence. This was what happened to El Chapo's son. He was caught in Mexico, but was sent to the U.S., extradited, just so he can serve his life sentence. A lot of people think they can go to Mexico and not get extradited. These people will be having, like, agreements with countries. Mm -hmm. You got to really look before you go to see a country's extradition um, process. Like I think Sassy Man um, Russell did. Rusty. Russell. Nah, real talk though. Like he did. That was a scheme and that shit though. Real talk. And that dude's just so creepy, bro. Like creepy grandpa, dude from um. Hey guys, you wanna come over for some cupcakes? Oh my god, what's that dude name from that uh cartoon? Mm -hmm. Bruh, what is that cartoon? It's a creepy old dude, Family Guy. Anyway, it's a creepy, freaky old dude. <laughs> is it Family Guy? Anyway, let's go. This is why I think it wouldn't be smart if Diddy was to flee to Antigua if he wanted to flee. Now, if he fled to a country like, say, China, Indonesia, maybe Iceland, or maybe far in Europe, like Belarus or something, you know, those countries with no extradition treaty, I think that would be a much safer option. And it will cause me to believe that Diddy did flee. But I think he's still in the United States. I actually don't think he went anywhere. I think the private jet was actually a distraction tactic to bring attention from him to something else. But it didn't work because look at all of this. Look at all of this. We're all here <laughs> talking about Diddy, right? But with that FBI raid, I can't help but continue to think about what they were looking for. Watch what <laughs> we know what they was looking for. It's a video around of Diddy speed into his house before the raid and a Jeep. I'm, I got it. I'm going to play it. It's on um, speeding in the house and the Jeep. So, and then after that, a few hours later, the police bust in his house. His jet is in across the water. He in Miami. So it's common sense that what? What you think? He had that. He What if he went to get some stuff, some cameras and ship that they stuff? They was looking for the water. tapes. Have somebody <laughs> go drop the tape. Oh, in Miami. another thing. Oh, yeah. Well. I was um, talking about the video oh, that oh, Snoop saying. and Dre were talking about. Just they lost a very important video. And uh, they were talking about how it was super private. Snoop was in it and Legend. some other people. Somehow the tape got missing. And he said he needs it back. Dr. Dre said it's a I on on tape. Yeah. Just Dre's wait. Party. His day is coming. Somebody really I really I really feel like they don't let no person 
Imagine having a party at your house and somebody steal your security camera tape. What? That's what that's what the rich people that's what celebrities and rich people be on. Just that's nuts. Ascended great. Yeah. At this point, I'm sure the stakes were high for Diddy. His house had been raided. Tape should not be accessible to no one. Like that shit should be hidden. And he's probably laying low. He's probably pulling his connections together, trying to get out of this mess. But inside Diddy's party, what was truly going on that deserved this much of a raid, let alone this much of noise on CNN, ABC, and every mainstream media? Some FO tapes. No, my honest opinion. He's getting a Frico case. <laughs> that's part of it. But my yeah. honest opinion, my honest opinion on this, and because they ain't not saying nothing about it. But a lot of people have been hurt. And, and, you know, a lot of people got shot. A lot of stuff going on with guns. Why you think? That's why That's why I feel like they ran in his house with all that force like that. Because why? They saying he shot that lady in the club. Shootings that the dude got shot in the bathroom. Somebody got shot here. He always having guns. Stuff with um dude went to jail for killing Tupac. Said he got paid by him. By put like. Looking for stuff with that and find why was <laughs> Diddy so hot? Apparently, they were looking for some tapes. Previously, on November 20th, 2016, Kanye West went on a 15 minute rant. He was live on stage in front of thousands of people. And this is it was wow. one heck of a crazy experience. Phones were held up in the sky, and Kanye West was on a floating stage. I know Yet, with this. the scenery, the things that were about to come next would be her. totally unexpected. Kanye began naming names. He said that he was putting his life on the line for this. And at last, Kanye admitted I'm that billionaires don't, don't had me. killers. Mm. I Call me, man. The story of Kanye matters because when he said billionaires like Jay-Z had killers, nobody believed him. Yet, people were quick to call him crazy, quick to say he had a nervous breakdown. And as a result of that rant, Kanye was put in the hospital. Kanye West is waking up in Los Angeles. Billionaires, they travel the world. You think when they go to other countries, they don't run into assassins and people that hospital where he's now under observation reportedly for exhaustion and stress and remember he told y'all about the medicine how he didn't take the medicine and what the medicine that did to other people that took the medicine wink wink <laughs> while we can argue that kanye went crazy or not if you look at today, especially the law, they're trying to get everybody to take when they get sick. I ain't gonna say the name of it, but y'all know that stuff that's spread it and that that shot suits and allegations surrounding Diddy. The things that Kanye said aren't too far off, right? That's what I tried to pass him off to be. Everything that people been saying over the years, but is it didn't funny. work. Like everything, especially with so the they tried to break them. Think of billionaires and killers. In the parties of Diddy, a thick 75 page lawsuit indictment paper is filed against him, not only Sean Combs, who is Diddy, Justin Dior Combs, who is his son, <coughs> Ethiopia had Tamarium, former CEO of Motown Records, Lucian Charles Grange, who might not be the CEO <coughs> of Universal Music Group anymore after this, mm. Christina Karam, the day to day manager of Diddy. Charlie's Recording Studios in Los Angeles, California. Love Records, Diddy's own child label with a very odd looking logo. Motown. I was looking at it like these people are in, it too, in, 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 in cahoots with this shit, but guess what? When you in that, when you in the music industry and you at that level, even any level, they gonna get you what you need. If you're the breadwinner, they gonna get you whatever you need, whatever you need. Motown Records, Universal Music Group, the entire Combs, not only Sean Combs, Karam, the day-to-day -day manager of Diddy, Charlie's Recording Studios in Los Angeles, California, Love Records, Diddy's own child label with a... Very odd-looking logo, Motown Records. 
I ain't gonna even look it up. I couldn't see none right Universal there. Universal Music Group, the that. entire Coombs Global Enterprise, which is a portfolio of Diddy's businesses, Anonymous John and Jane Doe's, and lastly, ABC Corporation. These allegations were from a man named Rodney, who was born and raised in Chicago with a musical background, who met Diddy because he was really a skilled producer. And I was producing this first when he first started saying something, I said that he was participating. And he was having, he was doing all that. He was having fun. He was with it. He was with the shits. And see, till he found out he wasn't getting published, and now he started telling. Now, watch. Now he coming out saying that he wasn't. Oh my God! People already said did he? He woke up and did. But now he's saying. Now he coming out saying that he's participating. Watch. Sing several songs on Diddy's rhythm and blues album titled "The Love Album." Soon after accepting to work for Diddy, Rodney's life changed for the worst. Because the album was such a large project, Rodney lived with Diddy for a year and a month from. I really hope that was because of a scheduling type thing. No, because he wanted And not you know, necessarily a, I got to take my time and make quality music type thing. He was on it. Because that dude oh, he sucks. Was, he was with all the shits. Rodney was. I'm sorry. Until you figured out the only Diddy song I've ever liked was the one with him and Odd Piper, like I do, or um, he don't understand you or whatever. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But it, even then, he doesn't write his own shit. And everybody, knows it's like people crazy going crazy publishing since the beginning of over the this Drake stuff that I feel like is the Cat Williams stimulus package. How can you go so crazy over this man's music and he doesn't even write his own music? A lot of these people in the music industry. That's not Drake this future and all of them. We're trying to take my public. That's somebody thing. else. And I'm paying for everything, doing everything myself, working with people in the music, and they still trying to take my Let's go thing. before I just get off on a whole nother tangent. From September 2022 to November 2023. Oh, had detailed. Y'all know what time it is. Take this time to like the video. I swear, you know what? It's still here. The curse type still here. Like, it's the gift and the curse when you know too much. Like when you independent and you coming up in them. And I'm saying this from experience. It's the gift and the curse when you know too much because when people know they can't play you and take your publishing, they won't help you. They will not help your ass. You you gotta find your way. And the good thing is you you in a good situation because because you know you know but you gotta you know. And thanks for being help. here. Gene Deal. They can't take your ass. Holmes disclosed so much. Take your bag or take your, your man. He, he held home. nothing back. But I got a problem with him. I got a problem with Cassie, along with everybody else. Off the strength, they were complicit in my eyes, allegedly, for knowing and still. Participating, I've been saying this. Cuba Gooden Jr., who is an American actor known in movies such as, as Men of Honor and Boat Trip. Diddy left to Rodney Same and Cuba thing. alone and they were going together on purpose. Hey, when they get mad at you, they go tell on you. Come on, man. Cuba, well, just get on it. Just do what you did to the girls in the bar minus the lawsuit. We don't need another case. Just go in there and tell him you like his music, you like his sound. And don't tell him how it's I'm not, I'm don't get me wrong, I'm not sticking up for Diddy and trying to say that you know what I'm saying. It's definitely some truth in some of this shit because they got to talking about liquid, liquid coke and stuff like that, and then putting stuff in drugs, and then he has a liquor, you know what I'm saying? Shit makes sense, you know what I'm saying? Like fired you are face ass. Look at that right there. And this photo shows Gooden with his arm around Mr. Rodney Jones. And because shows Rodney smiling too. Face ass. Because everyone bends at Diddy's will, Mr. Jones recalls Diddy taking no for an answer. When it was reported in 1999 that Shine had shot up a nightclub in New York, Shine was sentenced to 10 years in prison for it. From 1999, he was released in 2010. But turns out he wasn't even I don't one. I feel like somebody told the lady, the lady that got shot in her face, and if the video is floating around too, if anybody want to see the video, y'all can look it up. The video of um the lady that gets shot in the face, um before she right before she getting shot in the face, 
you it's a video at the party. Puff Daddy standing right there by her. She's sitting down, Puff Daddy standing right there by her. But um, yeah, right before the, all this shit hit the fan with Puff Daddy, she was on the internet saying that she won't justice for that shit that happened back in the day. Yep. That shot the gun that night, and Diddy was the one who shot it. Diddy bragged to Rodney multiple times saying he was indeed the one responsible for shooting that nightclub that night. They were at this party on screen when that Jenny from the block. And I was tripping on that. That's that's how she ended up. More like it's because Lil Rod made you know said something about her in a statement about and that's because Puff Daddy said, Yeah, you know, trying to stunt. Yeah, I had I had Jennifer Lopez holding guns for me. You know what I'm saying? Like talking too much. Jenny with the Glock. It happened. The indictment shows how corrupt even the police department, people that are supposed to uphold the law and protect the citizens, how corrupt they could be in terms of doing favors for very rich people. Because Diddy made it clear that he not only had power within the music industry, but also with the entire law enforcement. This person is Fahim Muhammad, who's known as Diddy's head of security or Diddy's personal hitman. Holmes usually describes Fahim as the person who has the power to make people and problems disappear. He instructed his staff that if they were ever pulled over, he the person he probably got that secret sauce. That secret sauce fucking around make you have a aneurysm or a heart attack or something, huh? Make it look like it's make it look like, like it's natural. To call Mr. Fahim Muhammad <laughs> and immediately police would leave him alone in a situation while Diddy was making his love album on September 12, 2022 at Chalice Recording Studio, him and his son Justin had gotten into a heated argument with a 30-year-old man named Mr. G. Soon, they'd move the argument from the studio into the bathroom, but thereafter, gunshots would ring out and someone would be shot. After the shooting, a I wonder whose idea it was to move it to the bathroom. I wonder why. Who, of course, we know. I wonder who if it was, was Diddy's. Of course, it was Diddy. And he was yeah. just thinking, like, yo. He done been through a lot of shit, you know. We can't be doing this Playboy in the front of all these cameras. Well, honey, I really take it to the like bathroom. If all three of them was in there and they trying to say the son or him shot him, I feel like Diddy let the son do it on the real, like, huh? You know how to, it's just like the movie. Room. I wonder who popped who. To, you know who? Diddy ain't the I wonder if they tried to give dude some millions to say pop yourself. Interesting. A crowd gathered around the restroom, and there was Mr. G lying on the restroom floor, shot in the fetal position. Despite being the one who shot, Diddy came up with a plan, instructing everyone to lie to the police, saying he had nothing to do with the shooting and Mr. G was shot outside by a drive-by assailant. Pictures that I won't be showing show the aftermath of the shooting where it was. Bruh, that bathroom looks so crazy. <laughs> oh my God. It looked like an emergency room or a surgery table or something. To his name, credit card that doesn't run out. He paid for and attended several of Diddy's listening parties in his LA mansion. Rodney recalls that when he comes to Diddy's home, they disappear for hours into Diddy's bedroom. And as said above, underage girls and spike drinks were always present at these homes. The report compares his day-to-day -day manager, which they call KK, known as Christina Karam, as the Jelaine Maxwell of Jeffrey Epstein. Jones also witnessed Diddy distribute firearms from his bedroom closet to individuals dressed in all black. Because of mm. YouTube skylines, you know how they... Uh, we just found a dead body. There was nothing there with a name on it. We don't really know who he is. Take this time to like the video. And y'all know YouTube ain't about to allow none of that like this and yeah i won't be showing to see or diving too deep into it but just know it's a pink the pink stuff mm. substance that was put into these drinks that they were drinking to see is the pink powder that diddy takes that even all his house we don't know if it was put in there they said they had liquid cocaine too i don't know 
gatekeepers are instructed to keep in pouches just for whenever he needs it. Under that, a list of names were listed and the things each staff did were mind blown. For example, Stevie J recruited streetwalkers and participated in Diddy's freak off parties. Justin Combs did. Stevie J has always had this weird mystique to me. Me too. Dude gives me vibes of. Yes. Need to find him. Not just going one way, but two. Yep. Or a few. Dude gives me. I'll hook up with whatever type vibes. He gives me. Like just weird energy, dude. And he makes that little rat face, little rat face. Let's go. Diddy's very own son engaged in the free call. Now, that doesn't surprise me. Allegedly, Diddy has taken two of their women, then go back and tell them how the experience was. That is some demented bullshit. I wonder point blank period. I, wonder, like, I don't care how attractive you know, that like, person is. I wonder, like, you shouldn't want them. Yeah, you should want them. Like, Jeez, you know, these that's women. different. You, you, Plus two, like, knowing about the young woman and spike drinks, Brendan Paul, who worked as Diddy's weapon mule, transported that, guns that, that, that's and kind of selfish and lame to me. I ain't gonna even lie. Like, come on, you 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 a billionaire? You can why you why you wanna why? substances from mexico and distributed all of them to diddy frankie centella who carried the cash around paid brandon for these illegal stuff moy buan who goes around and hires street workers attended and participated in these freak offs and it gets even worse here because mr jones discovered that diddy had hidden cameras in every corner of his house in clothes like couples and comfortable like he said he said something to me one time a long time ago oh, at chris lighty's wedding he told me to take me shopping i looked at him like what the f what did what you just say <laughs> with the breadwinner who was melvin earl combs he has diddy's last name this was diddy's dad tell me a little bit about it there and why do you like working with him because you know he's not intimidated by you you know boy look at that head on dude Listen to him talk. Oh, Lord. And Mary J. Blige. But, oh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about Dick Baird and why do you like working with him? Because, you know, he's not intimidated by you. You know what I'm saying? He knows what's going on to leave my legacy behind. He's being more adults out there that kind of teach the young trust his What the? F what the, 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 the it's, look. Pause. No Diddy. Nope. My bad. No Diddy. Listen, that's why he was talking that crazy. His mouth, mouth, M O U F F F. I want to know. Dame Dash said he invented the pause. Did he say it came from Harlem? We gonna get to the bottom of it. P H. The street chewed him, spat Look. him out. He gave them artist. They gave him. I wonder if he got a tongue reduction or something. Pause. His like pause. No diddy. His tongue might be too wide for his mouth or something. He just couldn't keep a little snake mouth. Up. And a 30 day notice. He was determined to rise stronger than ever before. So he quickly began making moves. He surrounded himself with a team of hustlers who shared his own vision and hungers for success. Together, they laid. I used to be scared of Craig Mack. I'm not going to lie. The foundation for what would become Bad Boy Records. Puffy, Fat Bob, Freddy Fish. Yeah. Yo, what up, Bob? What's up, baby? What's up, baby? Everything is all good in the hood. Yeah, yeah. My headquarters right here, kid. Yeah. Bad Boy Entertainment. So named it a bad boy. I don't want to go against the grain. Anytime you go against the grain, they can sit. I called it bad boy because I want to go against the grain. I like going against the grain. So if you want to get the grain, did you go against the grain on all your people? All your people. Against the grain. 
for the traditional. Did you go against the grain on Heavy D? Did you go against the we grain like. on Tim Porter? Did you go against the grain on a lady? No. So, is it against the grain? A lot of people. If it were in reverse, is it weird that he's speaking in a weird voice? You know, I'm just so relaxed right now. I'm just gonna do the rest of my video like this, you guys. Let's continue. And you like kind of bad. Not nice. I mean, I know I'm talking like this, but um, I'm still kind of bad. You're probably a little, little. Right. What's wrong with dude, bro? He's a creep. You know, nothing like hardcore. Just. I didn't want to be regular. I didn't want to just make records. I didn't want to just make money. I wanted to make history. I'm making music that's time. You making history? Now, time is music. Hell nah. History? You making some history, Jack. Time is music that's going to be around when I'm not here, when my kids ain't here. Things that, you know, really affect the way of life. Under the Bad Boy banner, legends were born. The Notorious B.I.G., Craig Mack, Faith Evans, each one a testament to Diddy's eyes for talent. Bad Boy first releases Flavor in Your Ear by Craig Mack and Ready to Die by Biggie Smalls. And at this time, this was the time of CDs, meaning they were literally selling physical copies. Streams weren't available, right? Spotify wasn't a thing. So in these songs that I just said they made, they went platinum meaning they cashed in millions of dollars so because these songs i but they were broke where's total they're quiet because he took all the money where's total looked up how much a cd was and it was 16. 99 cents to three dollars per cd and these Oh, he must be talking about mass production. Songs, they went <clears throat> platinum, like I said, meaning they sold a million times. And All right, so I'm going to tell y'all a story about Craig Mack, allegedly. So, I don't know what kind of skin disorder he has or what. I had a cousin like that, though. Like, it would just be gaps in the skin. It would be damn near, like, almost real big-ass pores open. I don't know what it was. But anyway, um... Damn, I miss my cousin. That just threw me off. Anyway, Diddy was worried about his physical appearance. So after Craig Mack's first video, Diddy switched it up on the second video. You could barely see this man's face the entire video. I feel that's why Diddy never pushed him like big real talk but even big he's sitting around like i know his eyes used to go dude i it was some other shit though just think about that bunch you got diddy craig mack r.i.p then you got this big Yo, face that? Yeah. Yeah. You know they was paying for it. Let me just shut up and play the video. I'm sorry, y'all. And those platinum albums, those platinum singles and chart topping hits. Puff Daddy say that he gave Biggie 200000 for his publishing, but Biggie mama say Puff Daddy only gave her son 25000 He played the shit out of Biggie, boy. That was the most money Biggie had at the time. That's why Biggie was. No, but well, just solidified who Diddy was in the music industry. Look at that combo, y'all. <laughs> I ain't shit. Yo, MTV Raps, and we up in the house we that these bad boys bad built, boys. you know what I'm saying? No Puffy and crew. So, Puffy, no, this is my crew and me. This is family. Artists always first, baby. Puffy. Take it away. 
have already started to happen. People are dying already because millions are involved and these are street guys. So Suge, he held Diddy responsible for the shooting of his friend, leaving many. All right, that friend. Listen, yeah, I'm 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 gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it this up. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it alone. That friend, well, one of the friends, um, Justin Combs, his daddy. Yeah, I gotta make a different. I gotta make a video about that. I'm talking hella in this video. Jeez. I'm annoyed with dude for real, for real. So I was going through spice samples and I found that you show sure Liz talking too much, my guy. You know what I'm saying? Talking about Biggie and all the relevant shit. Kind of nonsense. We don't even entertain nonsense, my brother. Hey night. What's up, Cap? These millions were coming in, yet they weren't seeing nothing. I mean, this led to a decline in album sales. Artists were leaving. Artists are dead at this point. Mm -hmm. Seen as Diddy spiraling out of control, many artists began to leave Bad Boy Records. They weren't getting paid. Yet, all of these millions were coming in. Yet, they weren't seeing nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, this led to a decline in album sales. Artists. That's why what goes around comes around. And the, the allegations, they are like, it's some truth in some of this shit. It might be some lies and truth in it, but what goes around comes around. His day coming. Playing all these artists and playing motherfuckers. That's what it is. But he did give he gave he did give a lot back. He gave he gave everybody they publishing. And he, he gave away like 30 million already on the real. So never know. He might not when go the through. hell. You don't know. He might bought his way out. Bad boy have 34 artists. He gave away like 30 million to different charities and stuff already he, that nobody can talk about. So. 34 bad boy artists who have left the label. Maybe like three or who, 34. Can you name 10? Yeah, right before all this shit, the fan, he gave the groups count as one. And he gave away them charities and stuff. He knew this shit was coming. Even Danny the Kane and them broke from hell. Um, B.I.G., he was ghostwriting for the bread. He started Junior Mafia just so he could have a publishing credit type loophole. Yeah, he was right for it. Because it wasn't under... Was the notorious big. big. So all the money it was like a whole different moniker. Oh, like oh, when oh, Prince oh, did the he's still making the art symbol. Guy. Biggie wrote the shit. But nevertheless, Shine, less. Craig, Mac, a lot of nevertheless, shit. who are these 34 artists? We have so many artists, man. We're leaving. Artists are dead at this point. Provide marketing and promotional support. So they gave him that. They gave him 100%. And Diddy, because he owns. Daddy and the family, he had about. Then that was like right after Biggie died. He had about. He had at least about 15 artists on the cover. So many artist catalogs. He was just getting richer and richer by the day. And just like that, Diddy had gone from a washed up producer to one of the richest men in America. I mean, at this time, you can say his net worth was around 50 to 60 million. Uh, la. This dude be talking some wild stuff, too. Yeah, he could look, you back deep. we about to end it right oh there, y'all. That, that's why. He yes, this video is longer than usual. I, I don't know. I'm just trying different things with the channel. You might even see some interviews up here soon. Um, you so might see a whole change in content. More untouchable. That's why. I'm yeah. Carried away. Anyway, thanks for being here. If you're still here, type still here. And um it's all about balance. This should be about let me know your thoughts. It's wild. But I hope you've learned something. Balance.
Finding the perfect home at a good price in Milwaukee right now is like finding a needle in the haystack because after price y'all it's the biggest up awards and the winner is 50 cents he has to be diddy's biggest up in these past couple of weeks he has been putting his back into it and trying to expose diddy as well as some of his past crimes that he got away with or at least that's what diddy thought but now that 50 cent is spilling his tea on him it looks like diddy wasn't as slick as he thought he was trying to commit these alleged crimes well the latest tea that 50 cent is now spilling has to do with how diddy allegedly put a hit out on jamie fox because Jamie was spilling all the tea in Diddy's free cuffs, and it was making Diddy look bad. Even worse, 50 revealed that Jamie was about to reveal the real deal that he saw during these free cuffs. And 50 Cent is claiming that Diddy tried to take Jamie out to protect himself and his free cuffs. So what type of alleged crazy secrets did Jamie allegedly have that Diddy was willing to kill enough to hide? And is Jamie really going to file his own lawsuit against Diddy? Ooh, join the list. Now, if you've been following this whole media circus surrounding Diddy these past couple of months, then you probably know all about his FOs, 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 these freak offs, and the crazy things that he did to other people and forced other people to do to him and themselves, allegedly. Now, rumors about Diddy's parties have been going around since the 90s, but it wasn't until last year that we got to know just how bad they were. And y'all, they were real bad, way worse than we could have ever imagined. Cassie's lawsuit was the first time we got a real insight into this parties because she set the ball rolling for Diddy's downfall. She went all out in her lawsuit, talking about her time with Diddy and what a horrible experience it was for her. She talked about how Diddy had a taste for male escorts, and according to her, he would force her to go on escort websites, hire black male escorts with BBCs, and then force her to be intimate with them while he watched. And allegedly, he wasn't just watching. He was also deriving a sort of pleasure from it because he would direct the freak offs telling her and the escorts what he wanted them to do and he would also record them but interestingly cassie wasn't the only victim who accused diddy of recording these crazy actions because lil rod also exposed diddy for the same thing claiming that diddy always had a camera during these parties for 50 cent and jamie fox himself jamie was often behind the camera at these parties so he had full knowledge of what was going on but unlike most people who attended these parties jamie didn't know how to keep his mouth shut and that's how we ended up on Diddy's bad side, allegedly, to the point where Diddy allegedly tried to have him murdered. He once talked about the craziness at Diddy's parties and how Diddy trusted him enough to have a behind-the-scene camera recording this freaky stuff that was happening at the party. You know, you couldn't even get in this party, so the way I would get in this party is I'd show up with a camera. Ha, huh, yo, you gotta let me film this, the whole... Thing. We need to document this, Playboy. But the interesting thing about this is that according to 50, the feds have been looking at Diddy and his shady parties for a long time. But for obvious reasons, they had to keep these investigations secret. This explains the crazy raids at Diddy's houses up by Homeland Security a couple of weeks ago. But Diddy doing freaky stuff is his business. And as long as it's consensual and not with some young underage people, I guess it's not a big deal, right? I mean, it's wild, but then if they're adults, it should be all right. But allegedly, that's not the case because many of Diddy's victims didn't consent to these freak offs, and he allegedly forced it on them against their will. Cassie said it, Lil Rod said it, and according to 50 Cent, there are a lot more people who did it either force into freak offs or tried to force into freak offs. Allegedly, his former bad boy artist Mason Betha is one of those people. Mace and Diddy have been on bad terms since Mace left bad boy. Well, when Mace left, what'd he do? He became a pastor. Some to the records, and according to 50 Cent, it's because allegedly Diddy tried to push him onto one of those freak offs during his time under Bad Boy Records. Allegedly, this caused the beef between Mace and Diddy, eventually leading Mace to cut ties with the label. 50 claimed that Mace allegedly saw a lot of weird and terrible things during his time with Bad Boy Records. And this is the real reason that Mace left the rap industry. He had to find God, y'all. And when he was ready to get back into rap, he fought Diddy until he was released from his contract. But Diddy didn't let him go like that because allegedly he refused to pay Mace the money he owed him. And like that wasn't bad enough, 50 claimed that Diddy went about bad mouthing Mace in the industry and got him blacklisted. You know, I did one album with Mace. One album. How much money do you think I owe this guy? One album? And then he became a fake pastor and went and conned people? 
And then y'all gonna let him throw dirt on the God's name? But luckily, Mace was able to find his own footing in the industry. And even though he never got his money from Diddy, he escaped with his dignity. But y'all wanna know the wild truth about this? It's that according to 50, people in the industry have known as far as back as the 90s about Diddy being on the DL and how he allegedly forces other young men to engage in DL activities with him. Suge Knight first dropped some hints about this in the 90s, claiming that Diddy was on the DL. But at the time, people didn't believe him because he and Diddy had that bitter East Coast, West Coast rivalry going on. And they thought that he was just taking cheap shots at Diddy with fake rumors. Don't even get me started on 50 Cent because he has been determined to expose Diddy for longer than I can remember. There was this time when he posted an awkward picture of Diddy and Rick Ross and he captioned it, something ain't right. 50 Cent stays pressing Diddy's neck at 24-7. And even when he was sick in the hospital, he still found some time and strength to throw some more shade at Diddy, saying, I can no longer help you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are now left under the leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. Honestly, it just kind of makes sense that 50 is keeping his foot on Diddy's neck, especially with what we know about 50's baby mama Daphne Joy and how she's been working as an S worker allegedly for Diddy for. All right, guys, my aunt's been keeping this from us, but it turned her life around and I have to share it. It's the. For a long time, which is low key humiliating for 50 considering that Diddy is his biggest op. While 50 Cent still has more stories to tell and he claimed that Diddy allegedly pretends to mentor young and up and coming rappers in the industry. But instead, he allegedly uses this as a cover to do some bad things to them. And 50 gave some examples like YK Osiris, actor Orlando Brown, and Empire star Brashear Gray. Y'all know that these guys had in common, right? They were all supposedly mentored by Diddy at one point or another in their careers. And allegedly, they all ended up being SA'd by him and had their careers ruined when they tried to stand up to him. Brashear Gray was one of those young breakout stars in the hit show Empire. And everyone believed that he was going to make something of himself after the show. But unfortunately, that never happened. And 50 is now accusing Diddy of allegedly ruining Brashear's life because Brashear wanted to stop those freak off. Rashir's introduction to Diddy came through his manager Charlie Mack, who helped him land his role as Hakeem Lyon on Empire. Actually, Charlie first introduced Rashir to Will Smith, who then became a mentor to Rashir. Rashir told Will that he actually had dreams of being a rapper and not an actor, so Will decided to do him a solid and introduce him to Diddy, who was one of the most influential figures in rap music. And at that time, we thought this might be perfect. But looking back at all the allegations of misconduct between Diddy and Will and the men they mentor, we should have seen the red flags waving in the air. There were whispers on the streets that Diddy allegedly sabotaged Bashir's career when Bashir grew tired of the wild activities. And it might explain why Bashir never hit it big after Empire. And Jaguar Wright That's actually crazy. backed this up. And young men have left their house fucking screaming to get away from them in their mentorship. Bashir Gray. <laughs> left that house fucking screaming. August the only one that stayed and I guess he was really sick. He need a doll. But aside from Jaguar Wright, according to 50, one of the people who suffered Diddy's wrath the most was Jamie, because Jamie almost lost his life. Jamie faced a severe health crisis last year, experiencing a medical emergency on a movie set. While his family chose to keep the details under wraps, Jamie's daughter Corinne stepped in with a statement saying, From the Fox family, we wanted to share that my father, Jamie Fox, experienced a medical complication yesterday. Luckily, due to quick action and great care, he is already on his way to recovery. We know how beloved he is and appreciate your prayers. The family asks for privacy during this time. But we soon found out that things weren't what we thought they were when several people in the industry who seemed to be in the know kind of hinted that he was a victim of an attack. For example, Steve Harvey said, <laughs> I don't even really know what happened, man. I was just stunned because Jamie's fit. This dude, he don't do nothing, man. This dude is fit. So I was concerned, man. So I hope everything works out. I'm pretty sure it will. Martin Lawrence also said, I mean, I wish him the best. He's in my prayers every night. He's not only one of the best entertainers we have out here, but he's a great person and he's a genuine person. So please pray for him. Nia Long also tweeted, my heart is heavy this morning. Praying for our brother Jamie Foxx. My love and prayers run deep for you and your loved ones. 
Hashtag pray for Jamie Foxx. But y'all, it got even weirder when the reports claimed that the police paid a visit to Jamie in the hospital and he allegedly told them that happened to him. And it wasn't an accident because somebody had actually tried to unalive him on purpose. A source said, Jamie Foxx told the cops somebody is trying to kill him. I'm telling you, man, it's like they have a timer on these celebs' lives. I believe them. Well, it didn't take long before people started to add two and two together, and they definitely came up with four. They pointed fingers at Diddy and accused him of allegedly having something to do with Jamie's situation. Now, people think that the real reason Diddy is coming for Jamie is Jamie's confession of how he had Diddy's tea and how he was going to expose the crazy things that Diddy had been up to for years. But things took a different turn when an insider came up with another narrative about the story, claiming that Jamie not only used to be a big H.O.E. back in the days, but he was also bisexual, allegedly. Back in the 90s, my mom nicknamed Jamie Foxx. Like, if you take the O out of his name and replace it with a U, that's what she used to call him. But to his face, it's like a ha-ha joke because he used to bang so many guys and girls in Hollywood. But y'all, that's not even the craziest part of the story because this next revelation is shocking. And he used to have these things called butt naked basketball games, okay? He would invite over a lot of like Hollywood elite to his house for a basketball game, but it was men only. And they would be like, oh, we're just gonna get naked and play basketball. I was like, oh, ha ha, let's get naked and play basketball together, which is weird. And this happened in the 90s. Yeah, it's a pretty wild story, but fans believe that it's still not right for Diddy to allegedly try to take somebody's life. And they left comments saying, I'm starting to think Diddy is truly a megalomaniac. That brother is a menace to society. And somebody needs to change quickly before he causes someone to lose their life. This is not a game at all. My like Cat Williams said about Jamie, how do you have a mysterious illness? And did he just nasty as heck? And he needs to be punished for it. He destroyed them young guys' lives. Put him in jail. Whew, well, there's a lot going on here. I need to know what y'all feel about it. What do y'all feel about Jamie Foxx and his mysterious illness? And do you think that it has something to do with Diddy? Drop your thoughts in comments below and then check out this next video. new income stream forget instagram tiktok or any of i've seen diddy have to hire extra security almost the military to stop people from wanting to scale the wall to get in his house because on the other side of that wall is beyonce jay-z and every big star you want to know if you've been keeping up with the recent hollywood scandals you know jason lee loves to stir things up but this time he has got some evidence that can destroy diddy's entire legacy yeah because the rapper sucking dick ain't gonna tell you they're not gonna tell you they, these niggas out here sucking dick fucking trans they're not gonna tell you these motherfuckers out here fucking well, Jason Lee is famous for finding the juiciest scandals and sharing them with the world. He has gone after everyone from Hollywood celebrities to famous rappers in the industry. And now he's focusing on Diddy. But before we get into the details of Jason's claims, let's remember his past successes. Remember when he spilled the beans on Beyonce and Jay-Z's rumored marriage troubles, or when he revealed the truth about Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy. Jason Lee doesn't just talk, he brings the receipts, and that's why people pay attention to what he has to say. So without any further ado, do let's get into jason well, lee's shocking claims well, against I'll diddy realize. well i mean listen one thing I, w I know for sure is that when it comes to our culture sometimes we cannibalize our own more than anybody else mm -hmm. and you know we've seen the former president of the united states inspired the country to turn into spider-man and climb up the Capitol to overthrow the government in the middle of an election but yet we haven't seen his mugshot or seen his kids handcuffed in a recent statement jason made it clear that he's not loyal to the hip-hop mogul he says he's got insider info from reliable sources within Diddy's inner circle who have been giving him some pretty disturbing evidence. So what's Jason accusing Diddy of? Well, he's claiming that Diddy is trying to blame his own sons for some of his secret crimes that he has committed in his past. This bombshell has rocked Diddy's world, painting a not so great picture of the rap star. But Jason isn't just talking out of his hat. He says he's got proof to back up his claims. Interestingly, he's got receipts that show Diddy's involvement in extremely illegal activities and his attempts to throw his kids under the bus. 
It's a shocking revelation that has made people question just how deep Diddy's past goes. But for Jason, this isn't about drama, it's about holding powerful people responsible for their actions. He's ready to take on Diddy no matter how big of a deal he is. And with the evidence he says he has, it looks like he's gearing up for a showdown with one of hip-hop's heavyweights. If Diddy is guilty of the crimes he is being accused of, he might be facing jail time very soon. And if Jason's evidence holds up, it could have serious consequences for Diddy and his friends. Now, let's go back and take a look at Jason Lee's history of stirring the pot with his previous blackmail incidents. So, this isn't the first time Jason has found himself in hot water for exposing secrets and making allegations against Hollywood stars. Recently, he tried to shoot his shot at Beyonce. <laughs> Well, just a few months ago, the popular host made headlines when he threatened to reveal secret information about Beyonce. But what led to this dramatic showdown? Well, it all started when Jason felt snubbed by Beyonce after not receiving an invite to one of her events. Feeling sad, he decided to take matters into his own hands and leverage whatever information he had against Queen Bey. In a bold move, he went on a live show and declared that he had some serious tea on Beyonce could potentially tarnish her pristine image. He didn't hold back, making it clear that he was willing to spill the beans unless Beyonce met his demands. It was a risky move, but one that Jason was willing to make in order to get what he wanted. But Jason's threats didn't stop there. He also targeted other high-profile figures in the industry, including Jay-Z. In fact, Jason was one of the first to publicly talk about Jay-Z's alleged criminal connections with Diddy. And while he didn't reveal the specifics of what he knew, his willingness to blackmail such influential figures speaks volumes about his personality. Recent reports suggest that Beyonce has taken the bold step of separating her assets from Jay-Z's, signaling a potential split. For years, speculation has been rife that their marriage was more of a strategic partnership than a love match, with some suggesting it was orchestrated by Jay-Z and Beyonce's father, Matthew Knowles, to boost their respective careers. So let's take a look at the recent allegations surrounding Beyonce and Jay-Z's relationship and how they intersect with Diddy's alleged misdeeds. Speculation about the state of Beyonce and Jay-Z's marriage has been rampant for years, fueled by rumors of infidelity. But could there be more to their relationship troubles than meets the eye? If he's done something guilty and he's found guilty in court, then he should be held accountable like everybody else. But this new world of let me put everything I want to say but can't say online without getting a defamation suit and a lawsuit. Let me leak it to the press and then have a person lose everything in order they, unless they give me a bag. I'm not a supporter of that culture either. And I just yeah, feel I like what's happening right now, if there is some truth to it, I would love to see it come to light and see him be held accountable. Jason Lee has pointed to Diddy's alleged criminal connections as a potential source of tension between Beyonce and Jay-Z. According to him, Beyonce may be seeking to distance herself from Jay-Z in order to protect her own image and financial services. With Diddy's shady dealings coming to light, Beyonce may be worried of being associated with him and a potential raid from feds. But what could be the reason for separating her assets from Jay-Z's? As per Jason, she may be trying to protect her bank account in the event that Jay-Z's alleged connections to Diddy come to light. By separating their assets, yeah, not only bank, Beyonce not only bank account, her image, her her endorsements. You know what I'm saying? You got you can't be married and you gotta you know. maybe aiming to protect her own wealth while staying from Jay-Z's legal troubles. Of course, this is all allegations at this point, and Beyonce is yet to comment on the claims surrounding her marriage. But if there's any truth to what Jason is saying, it could create a major breakdown in Beyonce and Jay-Z's personal and professional lives. And with Diddy's alleged misdeeds coming to light, their marriage might be in massive trouble. Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs is facing new allegations of sexual assault. This time, a woman claims the rapper drugged and sexually assaulted my team managed over 200 campaigns a year at the Opera House and Monday.com really helped with efficiency across the team. New York City back in 1991. So Diddy's legal issues have been all over the news. It all began with his ex-girlfriend Cassie suing him. Her lawsuit against Diddy centered around allegations of emotional abuse and financial exploitation. Cassie claimed that Diddy had failed to properly compensate her for her contributions to his career and had subjected her to emotional distress during their relationship. These allegations sent shockwaves through the industry, shining a spotlight on the darker side of Diddy's personal life. 
In response to the lawsuit, Diddy also settled with Cassie for a substantial amount, rumored to be between $20 to $25 million. This hefty settlement suggests that there was definitely some truth in Cassie's allegations and that's why Diddy was eager to put the matter behind him. However, the settlement also raised questions about Diddy's financial standing and the extent of his legal troubles. But Diddy's legal woes extend beyond his settlement with Cassie. In recent years, he has faced a series of financial challenges and setbacks that have raised eyebrows in the industry. For example, Diddy's partnership with telecom giant on his media company, Revolt, came to an end after he was thrown out from his position. Meanwhile, his loss of partnerships and revenue streams has also put a strain on his finances, raising questions about his ability to maintain his lavish lifestyle. Now, let's check out Jason Lee's personal experiences with Diddy and how it reveals some interesting things about the hip-hop icon. There's just been a shocking revelation from federal authorities regarding a highly private and scandalous video involving none other than Jay-Z and Beyonce reportedly taken during a wild party hosted by Diddy. According to Jason, Diddy's behavior can be described as intimidating and sometimes even more threatening. He recalls a specific incident where he found himself on the receiving end of Diddy's aggression. During a conversation at Diddy's freak-off party, Jason revealed that Diddy issued a threat, warning him not to cross him. This encounter left Jason feeling unsettled and provided insight into the darker side of Diddy's personality. But despite his negative experiences with Diddy, Jason Lee has come to the defense of Diddy's sons, Christian and Justin Combs. He describes them as really good kids and emphasizes that he knows them personally. I've known Justin for probably 15 years. I mean, I'm sorry, Quincy, he's one of his sons, and, and uh, and uh, his other sons, those are really good kids. So to see them in handcuffs, to see them put on display as criminals or to be uh, put into the conversation that they somehow are ushering underage kids into the compound for their, their dad to have their way with them. Those aren't the kids that I know. Jason's defense of the two young men highlights his belief in their innocence and underscores the well, comedian. I feel like if they lied on the kids, then they definitely got some lies going on with Puffy Man. But it's definitely some truth in there too, though complexity of their relationship with their father. In Jason's opinion, Christian and Justin shouldn't be blamed for their dad's alleged wrongdoings. He's never seen any proof that they've done anything bad, and he's shocked at the idea that they could be involved in their dad's stuff. But Jason is in a tough spot because he's going up against a powerful guy like Diddy, who is known for being ruthless towards anyone who challenges him. Diddy has a liking for dealing harshly with his critics, which raises serious worries about Jason's safety. Considering Diddy's history of using intimidation and violence to silence his critics, Jason is taking a big risk by speaking out against him. By publicly accusing Diddy and threatening to expose him, Jason is basically putting a target on his own back. But he needs to be careful and take steps to protect himself from any potential retaliation. But what do you guys think about Jason Lee speaking out against Diddy? Do you think Diddy's actions should be looked into with more details? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell to stay updated with our latest videos. I want to give you this book for free. It contains the exact roadmap that you can use to start a legitimate online. You got a lot of people, man, that's wondering why Fonsworth Bentley, you know, why he hasn't came out and defended Diddy. You know, they was real cool at one point, you know, so. Well, I was there when Fonsworth Bentley got his actual name. How they came up with the name and everything. We were sitting in front of the uh, apartment building on 74th and Park Avenue. Mm -hmm. It was me, him, Tony De Niro. Puff was upstairs. They was trying to figure out, he had became Puff, one of Puff's personal assistants. You understand? To make sure all sh Puff shit is there when we get ready to go. Everything that was supposed to be in order. That was Farnsworth Bentley's job. When Puff has to go to restaurants or places like that, you know, uh, he made sure everything was straight with that. You know what I'm saying? And he had another assistant, too. Uh, but Farnsworth Bentley was his personal assistant, put out his clothes, told him what he should wear, all that, like a stylist and personal assistant all together, you know? So we was in front of the house, and um, this dude, Tony De Niro, he played guitar in that uh, Bad Boy for Life. The black dude, not the white guy, the black dude who played the guitar, that's Tony De Niro. 
I think he might be from California or something. So Tony De Niro was like, yo, we got to think of a name for you, man. And if you're going to be his personal assistant and um, slash butler slash umbrella carrier, whatever you're going to do, you understand? We got to think of a name for you. We, we're going to try to make you like Bentley or either uh, uh, Fonsworth or either Bentley. You got to be, you know, you got to have that kind of persona. You got to dress all the time, be neat and the whole nine yards. And then the dude, Derek, was playing with him like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know how to do that. I could be over the top. You know, he was acting like that. You know what I'm saying? I could be over the top. So he was saying that. And uh, the dude, Tony De Niro, said, we got to figure out a name for you, man. It's got to be on the level of, you know, those characters. He said, he's gotta, you got to be like Fonsworth. You got to be like Bentley. He said, Fuck it. we're just going to call you Fonsworth Bentley. And he said, I like it. And they start calling him that. Mm. His name Fonsworth Bentley. And I said, these motherfuckers corny. <laughs> like I was, I was like, yo, please. Yeah. This. But that was genius. But, bro. They really turned them to it. They were, that was fucking genius. That's crazy how somebody else. He was always right there, but not like at nighttime when we was at doing things, he was, he wasn't, he wasn't around, bro. He was only there when the cameras was there and shit like that. You know, I don't know, you know, I don't know how much he was, he could do. I don't, I don't know if he would say anything because he probably signed the ND, a non-disclosure and he don't want to say anything against Puff anyway because Puff got shit on him. And I ain't talk about no sexual shit or none of that what? shit. The nigga was stealing, bro. <laughs> yeah. think yo, bro. The nigga's a... Yo, he got... He, <laughs> I don't want to put that on yeah. sticky fingers. That nigga... That part. nigga right there, bro. Don't lay nothing down around him. Prince Montana, they mentioned don't lay nothing down. That's why I mentioned Prince Montana in the, in the paperwork. Fonsworth, I think um he just he ain't been. I don't think he. I'm not that sure. I think I saw some with him. Around dude, right there, dog. Jennifer Lopez had these boots. They cost five thousand dollars. I'm like, what kind of fucking boots cost five thousand dollars? Definitely do. Now you gotta realize, definitely this do. is like in two thousand, early two thousand. These boots cost five thousand dollars, and because she was going to be out of out of the country or something like that, she didn't have them come to her house down in the village because she would have never got it because they'd be stealing her stuff down there at her apartment. So she had them come to Puff House. She wanted these boots so bad; she was mad. We, you know, they was they looked through everything trying to find Jennifer boots because Puff had like a, you know, Puff. People used to just, just give him shit and send him shit from everywhere. So he had this room, this mail room in his house with numbers just shit that he never even opened. But I don't know how fines were been. Yeah, I don't know if you um but he Puff Puff gave like recently he just gave back a lot of publishing to artists and he donated like 25 to 30 million to different charities. You know what I'm saying? So, and then he gave that girl, Cassie, he settled with like 20 to 25 million. So he probably like all the found that shit. Old but we went over there. I don't know. To his house. To and we found a lot of Jennifer shit and everybody else's shit that belonged to Puff. I guess, I guess Puff had too much stuff in the room and he was just keeping them for it. And you seen this with your own eyes? That's crazy, man. My own eyes, bro. We went to his apartment. Yeah. Puffy boy, Biggie was writing on the real at the beginning of the video. I show like you know like Biggie was writing plenty of that shit though. Like he's making so much money off Biggie because Biggie was writing for all them I mean, artists. He's still making. He don't even like, seem like that type of dude, dude, yo. But damn, he's security money of Biggie boy. Security also we went over there, man. They had to do. And, and he only he 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 got Biggie publishing for twenty five thousand. Biggie mama said Puff Daddy is an interview saying Puff Daddy he said he got it for two two hundred thousand, but his mama said he gave my son twenty five thousand. And that's why 
Puff had stopped messing around. Just publishing away. And then he goes get a show. He tricked me. Puff ain't say nothing. He went and got a show of how to be a teaching thugs how to be the but gentleman. He what he got coming. I hope the first thing he talked to him on was it. Don't steal. <laughs> yeah. Tonight, you know we're not put, putting none of this up, guy. We just having a conversation. Nigga, just you don't person. control my media team. <laughs> Talk to me, nigga. What you talking about, nigga? Clubhouse shenanigans on deck, nigga. You crazy? Clubhouse shenanigans is in the room, so this is going on YouTube. So, so, wait, what? Ninja. All the champagne was spiked, son. Like all the champagne was spiked. Everybody was passed the fuck out. I don't drink. I don't drink. So I was playing that shit off. Like I don't fucking drink. I smoke, nigga. Like I smoke and I had my own weed, but like everybody was passed out. Yo, did he had that man in the room? Look, yes. I put my ear to the fucking door and I brought the phone because Diddy started going in overdrive. I ain't know what the fuck was going on, but I just heard balls slapping against ass cheeks. I heard niggas struggling to take dick. I heard niggas being like, yeah, daddy. Like when, when I when, when he started all that. Daddy this and daddy that. And then I heard some hollering and struggling like, yeah, I kept the phone there and I recorded all that shit because I was like, this nigga did he bitch. So I'm finna, finna put the squeeze on and get me a- Oh, bro, oh, fuck, fuck that shit, man. Oh, fuck that shit, man. Man, listen, I know how, like, I didn't work with AI and shit like that. And that shit do not sound like AI. I'm like, I'm trying to get these niggas the benefit of the doubt, but I swear, I, that sounds like Nick Mill saying, "F that ad, nigga. Fuck that ad, nigga. Fuck. Oh my God. I listen. I, I listen. I'm a Meek Mill's. Well, I, I was a Meek Mill's fan of his music. You know what I'm saying? Like people, music get programmed in your head. It sounds like he's saying that you just heard that. That you. Oh fuck. Fuck that shit, nigga. But that ass nigga, that don't, do you mean to tell me that don't sound like me, Mills? Um, and give me a- Oh, bro, oh, fuck, fuck that shit, Mills, oh, fuck that ass nigga. Oh, that sound like me, Mills. That's right, that's, that's, I'm telling you, AI, yeah, AI, I AI, AI ain't that motherfucker. Uh, this is why I don't I'm kill you, you be fucking on my I'm, train of I'm, thought. I've worked with shit like that, like, I, I, I just made me with that GPTs and I'm, I'm a geek that, like, I'm not a make it right, uh-uh. I don't know. I produce and I know how to do it. Hey, I make shit. The voice did not. That's it. Only on the hundred side. That shit sound authentic. Side exclusive. That shit sound. You, Yo, Diddy, me. I don't mean to tell me that don't sound like you, Diddy. Ain't man. no quiet, bro. Diddy, <clears throat> you need to let us know if you was that man right there. Yo, Diddy, me. Man, that shit again. That shit sound like me, Mill. Everybody quiet. You told Keely, you be fucking up my trainer. Yeah, I know. Oh, fuck. Fuck that shit, man. Like, this nigga did he bitch. So I'm finna put the squeeze on and get me a... Oh, bro. Oh, fuck. Fuck that shit, man. Fuck that shit, man. That's nuts. Nuts. That's that's. I'll try to give him a bit of the doubt. Yeah, I know. But man, see, this is why I the more I hear people, it, the more it's like my trainer talk. Don't you know? put like ain't no telling what whack yeah. gonna pull out the hat. Everybody they, quiet. I don't know. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Only on the hunter side. Hunter side exclusive. Yo, Diddy, me. Ain't no staying quiet, bro. Diddy. You need to let us know if you was that man right there is in your house. I'm pretty sure he got video of the night. I'm pretty sure of it. You need to denounce this or you need to something. You can't just let this ride. And you need to know some shit you got to answer to, bro. Meek, you are in the pool. The nigga calling you daddy. And you, you know, got the little boy shorts on. You happy as a lark. Why right, everybody quiet? What's going on? Something everybody all right? Hey, hey yo, Eric, you all right? Did Eric play the audio? It's crazy.
crazy. I truly believe that the opportunity that we have as coaches and experts to package up our knowledge into a program I'm that we set up for simple marketing. I was like, man, I ain't listen to that. I say, I listen to it, I'm like, that ain't no motherfucking Meek Mill, man. I've heard it a couple more times, like, wait, wait. It was good to you. I love you, Poppy. ...of Diddy's blind items. And there were a lot of blind items, even in the last 10 years. But we are still getting some blind items about his past, including those about Jennifer Lopez and Tupac. So let's get into it. We're starting off in January of 2013. This next beauty is a kept woman in every sense. People keep on forgetting that Keefe D just went to jail and he kept, you know, you look at his interviews, he's saying, he keep on saying, did he pay them, did he a million dollars to do it? So y'all think they ain't trying to figure that out too? On top of all these shootings and guns and stuff like that going on all the way from back then to now? Of the word. She is the concubine of a rich, arrogant music mogul who lavishes her with gifts and baubles so she won't know her true self worth. This one hit wonder has learned to play the submission game to the T. And this is allegedly Cassie and Diddy. In February of 2013, this A plus list rapper who talks a big game when it comes to women and has had a few high profile relationships with women has always preferred guys. Fairly open secret. The thing is, he never practiced safe intimacy, and one of his conquests is threatening to sue him, saying the rapper passed on the HIV virus. The rap star has refused to take a test proving that he is negative. And this one is either 50 Cent or P. Diddy, allegedly. Hello. In March of 2013, this A-plus list celebrity slash producer slash fake rapper loves women, but he likes them to get freaky with him. One of his regulars was with her girlfriend in an adult toy shop, and she kept saying no to her friend and then finally said, blank, P. Diddy, allegedly, likes them to be like a foot long. I honestly don't know how it fits inside of him. Also in March, this A-list celebrity rapper and mogul and sometimes reality star is not a huge drinker. At clubs, he will drink and he orders a ton of booze, but he is not like Jay-Z who will actually get hammered. There are times, though, that our celebrity does. If you are an 18 to 22-year-old gay male interested in older men and lots of presents, this is your chance. Our celebrity uses his drinking as an excuse to take the night off from being a ladies' man. He heads to a club and finds find some willing guys, and then for the rest of the night, they drive around the party bus while our celebrity enjoys getting wild with the guys, with no one to see, and is passing out money and presents and booze, and seemingly at his happiest. When the party is over, he drops them back off at the club and then pretends it all never happened. Just blame it on the booze. In May of 2013, what was supposed to be a great business arrangement went sour really quickly because of some demands this A++ list producer made on this current A++ list celebrity. The, the story of their involvement went to the press and then they had to deny it because she had a problem with the money he was going to pay her for the summer and no problem with the amount of time they were going to spend together. But when he said that he would only go through with everything if they had unprotected intimacy, she said no, wouldn't budge, he wouldn't budge, she has moved on and already found someone else. And this is allegedly Diddy and Kate Upton. In July of 2013, this A-plus list celebrity rapper caused this male escort he had hired to have to go to the hospital after he was abused so violently during intercourse this past week. Our celebrity made him sign an agreement when he arrived and gave him a huge tip when he left. Hope it covered the hospital bill. And this one is allegedly either Diddy, 50 Cent, Kanye West, or Dr. Dre. In August of 2013, you, this A-list is everything except for movies. He has been in them, but mostly in cameos. Anyway, he has always dabbled in substances and has been busted and exposed in the spot at least once in a reveal and more than once in the blinds. The HGH steroid combo he is currently taking right now is worse than anything he has done before. That smack he gave his B-list celebrity girlfriend last week was because he blamed her for his impotence problems. He wants 
wants to look good but is starting to lash out at everyone. Don't put a weapon in his hand right now. And again, this is allegedly Diddy and Cassie. In September of 2013, this A++ list celebrity and everything else who has had one of the most famous faces in the celebrity world was so messed up on substances this weekend, he was running around telling everyone that they had him confused with his twin brother. The twin brother's name changed periodically over the weekend, but the twin brother also seemed to be way more into men than women. No physical action, but there was a lot of comments and schmexual innuendos and a lot of adjustments that he had to keep doing to himself when he would see an attractive guy. It lasted the entire weekend. And this is allegedly Diddy at Burning Man. And this last one from 2013 is also in September. This a list celebrity and rapper is not a nice guy. When he gets really frustrated, he takes out his anger on the male escorts he buys for a few hours. They know a beating is coming, but they are prepared to sacrifice a few days of bruising for the monster payments they receive. On Tuesday night, though, our celebrity went overboard, and it is going to take about $100,000 to get a guy to shut up about it. And this is allegedly Diddy, Kanye, or 50 Cent. Go to part two. Here's part okay. two of a deep dive into Diddy's blind items. But it's all lining up to him. Wow. Even though Bitcoin has oh. shattered its previous record high, please but see, he, do he, not he, buy he, 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 he played a like completely he, he different really box. We are in December of 2014. This A-list performer slash producer slash promoter was running around like crazy at a party this week in the warm weather climate. With all the glitz and glamour at the party, you would think he would be in his element, but he was on edge and doing shot after shot and popping pills like crazy until a guy showed up. Our performer, with the unusual names, grabbed the hand of the man and smiled and took him to the corner where he gave him lots of kisses. It was a head turner for everyone. And this is allegedly Diddy in Miami. Also in December, this foreign-born B-list mostly movie actress, who stays B-list by name only, was shocked she managed to get pregnant because doctors told her after she ended a pregnancy a few years ago that she wouldn't be able to have kids. She has not listened to anything by the A-list performer and producer and promoter since. And this is allegedly Sienna Miller and Diddy. In February of 2014, it took almost a decade, but this former A-list singer and celebrity, who is now a B-minus lister, finally paid off her debt to this A-plus list everything. I don't even want to know how much intimacy she had to have or the amount of money and interest she had to pay, but her debt is clear and now she will probably have a hit record. And this is allegedly Ashanti and Diddy. In April of 2014, this A-list everything bought and paid for an escort for his son. The escort was a corn star the son had always liked. The A-lister checked her talent test before he would let her spend the night with his son. And this is allegedly Diddy and his son Christian on his 16th birthday. Also in April, this performer turned mogul, turned group maker, turned whatever it is he does now, was at Coachella this weekend and got into an argument with one of his bodyguards. He told the bodyguard the only way he was going to keep his job was to walk around naked for 30 minutes. The bodyguard did it while everyone looked away uncomfortably. In July of 2014, I don't think it is going to start a rap war or anything, but this B-list singer with the very interesting look used to be the go-to third party for this A-list mogul producer and wannabe singer and reality star, and now she hooks up with this a list rapper when he wants something different than what he usually goes for. Sure. And this is allegedly Janelle Monet, Diddy, and Jay-Z. Also in July, this A-list mogul who would really love to be classified on here as an A-list singer or rapper or something requiring talent has a camera crew following him around for a few months because he wants to release a movie about himself and is ticked off that no one has wanted to do so. His girlfriend is getting ticked off because even though it is a documentary, if he doesn't like something she does or says but likes what he did or said, he makes her do it again many times. He is directing the film. And this is allegedly Diddy and Cassie.
in October of 2014, for the second time that I can remember in the past two years, this foreign-born B-list mostly movie actress who has some really high name recognition and not in a good way for the things she has done, hooked up with this A-list mogul slash celebrity slash reality star slash wannabe singer because she needs another cash infusion. She has been working more to pay the bills but lost all of her money in a side venture and our mogul has always had a soft spot for her after an incident several years ago. And this is allegedly Sienna Miller. Also in October, this very famous music artist is known as quite a ladies man. That's why we were a little surprised to hear that he has an interesting set of toys at his home, a large collection of toys in every color and shape and size. The reason that this is interesting is not because he uses those toys on his female guests, it's because he has the ladies use them on him. And I can't read the rest of this blind item because TikTok's going to take the video down. So if you want to read it, you can see the text above. And that's it for 20. Yeah, I remember Gene Deal said he, he, he went to the porn, I mean, to the shop, the porn shop, and Diddy got them book plugs. 14, go to part. Here's part two of a deep dive into Diddy's blind items. We are in December of 2014. This A-list performer slash producer slash promoter was running around like crazy at a party this week in the warm weather climate. With all the glitz and glamour at the party, you would think he would be in his element, but he was on edge and doing shot after shot and popping pills like crazy until a guy showed up. Our performer, with the unusual names, grabbed the hand of the man and smiled and took him to the corner where he gave him lots of kisses. It was a head turner for everyone. And this is allegedly Diddy in Miami. Also in December, this foreign-born B-list mostly movie actress, who stays B-list by name only, was shocked she managed to get pregnant because doctors told her after she ended a pregnancy classified on here as an A-list singer or rapper or something requiring talent, has a camera crew following him around for a few months because he wants to release a movie about himself and is ticked off that no one has wanted to do so. His girlfriend is getting ticked off because even though it is a documentary, if he doesn't like something she does or says, but likes what he did or said, he makes her do it again. Many times. He is directing the film. And this is allegedly Diddy and Cassie. In October of 2014, for the second time that I can remember in the past two years, this foreign-born B-list mostly movie actress who has some really high name recognition and not in a good way for the things she has done, hooked up with this A-list mogul slash celebrity slash reality star slash wannabe singer because she needs another cash infusion. She has been working more to pay the bills but lost all of her money in a side venture and our mogul has always had a soft spot for her after an incident several years ago. And this is allegedly Sienna Miller. Also in October, this very famous music artist is known as quite a ladies man. That's why we were a little surprised to hear that he has an interesting set of toys at his home, a large collection of toys in every color and shape and size. The reason that this is interesting is not because he uses those toys on his female guests, it's because he has the ladies use them on him. And I can't read the rest of this blind item because TikTok's going to take the video down. So if you want to read it, you can see the text above. And that's it for 2014. Go to part three. Here's part four of a deep dive into Diddy's blind items. There is actually one more blind item from 2014. Okay, this one's from December. And it reads, this B-list celebrity turned author turned back to D-list celebrity, kind of on par with Tila Tequila, tried to get this A-list everything to marry her. He hooked up with her for a while but wasn't interested in the marriage thing, so now she is hooking up with his son and is trying to convince him they should have a kid together. And this is allegedly Carrie Superhead Steffens, Diddy, and his stepson Quincy. And now we're getting into 2015. We are in January. This foreign-born B-plus list mostly movie actress has been making the most of the time away from her husband. Not much for marriage vows anyway. Our actress has been hooking up with an old flame who is an A-list celebrity who probably wishes he was an A-list rapper. Hey, he is a mogul though. And this is allegedly Sienna Miller. 
in February of 2015, this a plus list mogul and reality star who really wants to be a rapper won't speak out publicly about this new show, but is making sure behind the scenes that people know he is against it. A lot of financing comes from people who consider the show to be hateful and want to make it clear they won't provide any money for any projects to people who support it. And this is allegedly Diddy and Empire, and he forbid his son from appearing on the show. In May of 2015, this A-list mogul who would love to be an A-list singer and rapper sent his long-suffering girlfriend back to her room the other night while he hooked up with some random waitress. Hey, every so often you can change that waitress to waiter. Don't tell anyone. And this is allegedly Diddy and Cassie. In June of 2015, this celebrity is vicious towards anyone who dares to make him or his very entitled child look bad. So he engaged his publicist to contact major media sources with a story that positions him and his child as victims. His goal is to embarrass the school into punishing the employee who dared to stand up to him. If the bully angle doesn't succeed, his next move will be to throw down the race card. Who's the real bully here? Another one from June, this A-list mogul and rapper wannabe slash celebrity has moved on from his most recent celebrity girlfriend to this Orange is the New Black actress who is also going to be the face of one of the products the mogul sells. And this is allegedly Diddy moving on from Cassie with Dasha Polanco. In July of 2015, he isn't married, but he is in a relationship, and they did hook up when he was married before, so this is familiar ground for this foreign-born b list mostly movie actress and this injured A-list mogul. And this is allegedly Sienna Miller and Diddy, who was not married but in an on-and-off relationship with Kimberly Porter from 1994 to July of 2007, and he had just had knee surgery. In August of 2015, this A-list mogul slash reality star slash wannabe rapper emailed a video this week that he shot sometime last year of him getting serviced by a former model slash celebrity girlfriend slash celebrity wife slash awful actress slash wannabe reality star. Included in the email was the model's sometime boyfriend. And this is allegedly Diddy, Amber Rose, and the sometime boyfriend was Machine Gun Kelly, allegedly. Also in August, this singer was bordering on A-list at one point in her career. Then she started dating this at-the-time married A-list mogul. Her career went nowhere, and while he goes out almost every night, he makes her stay home because he is too insecure for her to go out without him. When they do go out together, he ignores her but does not let her talk to anyone except pre-approved females. And this is allegedly Cassie and Diddy. And he wasn't married to Kim Porter, but was with her for 13 years. In September of 2015, this A-list mogul who really wants you to take him seriously as a performer spent the night in a tent this weekend with another man and had his long-suffering girlfriend find another place to sleep. And this is allegedly Diddy and Cassie at Burning Man in Nevada. In October of 2015, she's the first lady of his bad boy empire. He's the magic dragon known to wrestle over a morning bowl of frosted flakes. Just ask Usher. So what do these two blind items share in common? Easy. Our other blind item, Palmer, and I'm not talking about cocoa butter. Think rags. She brings home girls all the time for three ways, and it's one of the reasons why he keeps her around. The drop? He bones all of the young chicks in the industry who his sons have crushes on, and the sick thing about it is he goes back to tell his sons what he did in bed with the girls that they are lusting over. And this is allegedly Diddy, Cassie, and Kiki Palmer. In December of 2015, one of the most unfaithful guys in all of the celebrity world was added again this week. This A-list celebrity slash wannabe rapper slash actor who is a mogul hooked up with another woman while his celebrity girlfriend was out of town. And this is allegedly Cassie while she was filming Honey 3. Also in December, apparently this b list singer was willing to take years and years of being cheated on by her A-list celebrity slash wannabe rapper slash mogul. She was also willing to be ignored for weeks at a time or banned from attending events so he could hook up with others. What finally caused her to leave was him getting another woman pregnant. It has happened before, but this time he didn't hound the woman until she got rid of the baby like the others. 
Another one from December, this A-list list celebrity slash wannabe rapper slash possible killer slash mogul didn't give his ex even one cent when she left. All those years and she has nothing to show for it except for being a doormat. Meanwhile, he texted her a photo of him giving a $100,000 car to his baby mama because she knows how he likes to, the game to be played. And this is allegedly Cassie, Diddy, and his baby mama, Kim Porter. Another one from December, what better way to make everything look like something it isn't? The offspring of this A-list mogul and wannabe rapper is being used as a cover for multiple people. He is pretending to date an A-list reality star while actually sleeping with the reality star's possible future stepfather. And this is allegedly Diddy, Quincy Brown, his stepson, Kourtney Kardashian, and Corey Gamble. And the last one from December and the last one from 2015 reads, even to me, this is strange. This A-list mogul slash part-time reality star slash part-time singer and rapper paired off this A-minus list mostly television actress from a hit network show with a guy that he hooked up with a few months earlier. Apparently, he thought it would be a good match. The actress has no idea about the hookup. And this is allegedly Diddy, Taraji P. Henson, and Kelvin Hayden go to part four. Here is part four of a deep dive into Diddy's blind items. We are in January of 2016. Like father, like son. The son of this A-plus list mogul slash wannabe rapper is into guys. The dad knows how important it is to hide behind a woman, so is frustrated the son does not have that part of it down. And this is allegedly Diddy and his stepson, Quincy Brown. In February of 2016, police have asked to interview this A-list mogul slash wannabe rapper for the first time in forever about his knowledge of a murder. So far, he has been keeping it out of the press, but won't be able to for much longer. And this is allegedly Diddy and Tupac. In March of 2016, apparently the photos and texts that this former singer turned wallflower has of her A-list mogul slash wannabe rapper boyfriend got her some points and some cash and some respect. She isn't afraid to use them, so the boyfriend caved. And this is allegedly Cassie. In July of 2016, this A-list mogul slash wannabe rapper who has been very quiet as of late is HIV positive. Also in July, if you are a young guy looking to break into the record business and you get introduced to this A-list mogul and wannabe rapper, do not go out for drinks with him unless you are prepared for what he expects from you after the drinks. In October of 2016, a little Molly and some booze made for a very wasted appearance on this talk show for this mogul and wannabe rapper. And this is allegedly Diddy on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Also in October, apparently this A-list mogul slash wannabe rapper should be more careful about who he makes promises to because one of the women he recently slept with is telling everyone how awful he is in bed and that she actually asked the question no guy ever wants to hear. Is it in yet? Yep, he is that small. In December of 2016, this one named singer with an interesting choice of hairstyle for several years has new music ready to be released. Just one problem, it is really, really good. So what is the problem? Her mogul and wannabe rapper boyfriend won't be able to keep her under his thumb if it takes off. So he is blocking the release. That's this is allegedly he, Cassie. And you know what? And the last one from- I feel like that's why Cassie came, that, okay, all, everybody. Cassie, he he been blocking her, so she that's why she's like, man, fuck it, I might as well just sue your ass. You know what I'm saying? Since you blocking my career, same thing with Lil Rod. Man, I might as well motherfucker tell on your ass since you taking my publishing. That's what it. That's what it's boiling down to. December and from 2016, don't feel sorry for this one named singer in a relationship with a sometimes one named wannabe rapper mogul. She got tired of being thrown to the side at holidays and actually has a new guy in her life. That mogul is going to be shocked to see her say bye bye in 2017. Oh, and with a nice chunk of change too. And this is also allegedly Cassie. Moving on to 2017, we are in February. He would like you to believe he was hurt playing some sport or some other. Out of all them artists around, did he? He didn't expect to see. He been he been blocking artists' careers since the beginning of time. Think about it. Most of the artists that he dealt with, once they like don't go up with him, 
he they 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 don't never they career never you know go to new heights they always just demo they always just disappear like they other cool reason but the fact is this a minus list mogul wannabe rapper fell down the stairs while high on something that rhymes with placid in March of 2017, the other night, this A-list mogul and wannabe rapper was inspired to have his 70s theme style party. He wanted it to be like a corn set from that time period. The only thing that was a bit off was he let his girlfriend run solo while he hung out with guys until he directed them in their solo scenes. And this is allegedly Cassie and Diddy. How did Justin Bieber and The Rock get so damn rich Everybody, so quickly? Like well, Everybody's it's because story. they make a Everybody's special story. kind of money that no say, one talks about. Yeah, known as, I, didn't, I didn't open up a door and saw Diddy up here. You know what I'm saying? I didn't open up. Now we begging the master for what? We want God. We want God. Do you have any God? You mean with all this education we got, we don't have the ability to create a job? We got to beg our former slave masters to give us what if we united, we could give ourselves? Come on now. Salute, salute, and welcome to God, welcome to class, guys. It's the Nosy Ninja News session, guys, where we learn how not to be a fool from so well-paid fools. And we got a we got a heart-wrenching one today, guys. This one is sad right here, yo. I ain't even gonna hold you. It then got crazy for your boy Meek Mills now, yeah. It then got crazy to the point it then spilt over to his household. Meek Mills says rumor about him and Diddy are starting to affect his son, guys. Let's read this story. Let me pull this story up so that we can read this thing together. Again, guys, what's in the dark always come to light. Always. I've been saying it. What's in the dark always come to light, guys. I've been saying it the whole time. It says, time. Meek Mill says, rumor about his sexuality has started to affect his 12-year-old son. Meek Mills has had enough when it comes to recent rumors about his sexuality, which stems from a lawsuit filed against Diddy. The Philly rapper now claims that the perpetuating allegations are causing confusion for his 12-year-old son. I don't believe no Diddy story. Once he once they lied about me now. He wrote on Monday, April 8th, via Twitter, X. Anybody try to S-A me, it will be a bang out on the spot. How y'all don't know that, LOL? I don't care, but y'all confusing my son. He's 12 with people saying his dad, yay, it's sick. How out here, so F it, LOL. LOL. The 36-year-old had responded to someone who claimed that Diddy once dangled Wale from a balcony to which the DMV rapper teamed refuted reportedly. I don't believe no Diddy story. Once you lied about me now, anybody try to SA me, it will be a bang out on the spot. How y'all don't know that? LOL. I don't care but y'all confusion, my son, he's 12 with people saying his dad, yay, it's sick now out here. So F it, LOL. Meek Mills quoted April 8th, 2024. In the lawsuit where Meek is named, Little Rod claimed that the Dream Chaser founder had a S relationship with the former Revolt TV boss seemingly denying all claims. 
Meek has continued to defend himself following the lawsuit. Social media began to troll the dreams and nightmare rapper, pushing Meek to demand that his followers stop asking him about his. I honestly feel like Lil Rob, Lil Rod ain't got no reason to lie on me, Mill, unless somebody paying him to do it. I feel like he's telling the truth. His sexuality. Stop asking me. If I'm straight, I'm just going to play it raw how the world is. I'm blessed. I'm okay. But I ain't hearing nothing good looking, he wrote. Stop asking me if I'm straight. I'm just going to play it raw. But that's not answering the question, my guy. How the world is, I'm blessed. I'm okay. But I am hearing nothing good looking. That don't make sense, Meek Mills. March 2nd. 2024, he quoted that. Additionally, social media gave Meek a hard time over the weekend as he attended WrestleMania and recorded The Rock and Cody Rhodes in the video. He can be heard yelling at the seasoned entertainer to get up. But of course, the net made a joke out of it. You never gonna beat the allegation, one person wrote on X. As another said, you didn't have to say it's zesty like that to be funny, but go ahead. In true meek fashion, he responded with a run-on sentence saying, because I'm being funny with my kids and friends, I want y'all to keep posting stuff like this so I can help normal people figure they these mental phone agendas faster. I'll take the hit. Y'all seen me survive every internet attack because I'm being funny with my kids and friends, and I want y'all to keep posting stuff like this so I can help normal people figure they these mental phone agenda. That didn't make no sense, me. Me, put the smoke down, put the weed down, man. And I tell you, these people out here, they smoking, they smoking, they trying to get rid and escape all them demons that they that they had to endure to get to the level that they at right now. Meek, that wasn't an answer. And um, don't use your kid. It, it's, it's sad, yo. The internet is undefeated, guys. And this is why when we have these kids, it don't only go for the females, it go for the men too, guys. Your hour has come. All that partying you was doing with Diddy, you needed to have your ass around your kid. Now the kid got now your kid got a bad image of you, got a sad image of you. That's not even nothing to play with. That's nothing to play with, me. Mm -hmm. I'd be flipping right now. I'd be flipping on Diddy right now. But um, let's get into the main event, guys. Digital agencies, listen up. Duda introduces the power of website building, AI. Meek Mills, when he got into the game, he didn't set out to be uh, uh, questioning about his manhood with Diddy. But he put that self, himself in that position. Mm -hmm. as if perhaps Diddy and Meek Mill had... I mean... Yeah. Uh, to each their own. Hey, what's up, King Sun? Man, you know, when I first saw this, I'm like, I ain't say nothing about it. I want to be the first one to say it. I'm just like, this man look awkward. Like, he just look awkward. Look like he uncomfortable. Look like he like soaking in the pool. Like, he's doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. The year's biggest surprise came in the form of rumors. It appears that these two individuals have been involved in a secret relationship. Interestingly, Meeks, known for openly ridiculing and casting aspersions on those he suspects of being gay, has been discovered to lead a double life. He now shifts the blame onto Diddy for not maintaining sufficient secrecy, and there's even talk of legal action against him. Such actions only cast doubt on Meeks's innocence and suggest the lawsuit holds merit. He had that man in the wrong look. Yes, I put my ear to the door and i brought the phone because diddy started going in overdrive i ain't know what the f was going on but i just heard balls slapping against cheeks i heard struggling to take you really want to be a ceo want to be amazing y'all that is nasty guy. now i don't know how credible credible that guy is but now i mean man yo I'm, 
can you just imagine? And then we, we hear what did Meek Mill, what did Meek Mill, what did Meek Mills mean by that when he that song that we that we played, guys, when he said, "Hope they forgive me for what I did with Diddy." Like, what was that about, guys? Y'all remember that? Man, yeah, like when you in the studio, it's incredible, right, guys. Whatever. Who knows? So who knows? Talk about that shit. Actually do. Just the recent out. lawsuit has spilled all the details, accusing Diddy of taking Meek Mill downtown. And what's more, a shocking video has emerged on social media, seemingly confirming it all, leaving everyone stunned. It's but Meek fun. isn't taking this lying down. No, he's hitting back, alleging that Diddy leaked the tape to deflect attention from his own issues with Homeland Security. Not content with just firing shots on Twitter, Meek is taking Diddy to court, seeking some serious payback. Diddy better keep his legal team ready because Meek means business. And just when you thought things couldn't get crazier for Diddy, more lawsuits are flying around. Big ain't letting Diddy off easy. For decades, these scandalous rumors have swirled around, making us think we'd heard and seen it all. Yet we were mistaken. Just as we were going about our business, Homeland Security storms into Diddy's mansions in L.A. and Miami, dropping bombshells left and right. Though Diddy isn't home when the feds arrive, his sons Justin and Christian are handcuffed and taken away, reminiscent of a movie scene. Allegedly, they're entangled in some serious... Wow. So what if he did leak the tape? That'd be... Wow. It's ...illegal activities that Diddy may have been involved in. And just like that, Diddy's empire begins to crumble like a house of cards. Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a producer with a score to settle, is airing all the dirty laundry in a lawsuit, accusing Diddy of engaging in shady dealings. Lil Rod isn't holding back. I don't care what nobody say. He got a copy of his of his recordings. Even if they went in there and got that shit, even if the police went in there and got that shit, I guarantee he got an extra copy of that shit. He's outright stating that Diddy has been cozying up to well-known faces behind closed doors, dropping hints that make it abundantly clear who he's referring to. And it doesn't stop there. Lil Rod alleges a wild scenario involving Diddy, Meek Mill, and Usher engaging in unconventional activities together. While Meek Mill isn't directly named in the lawsuit, the clues seem to point straight at him. The lawsuit mentions Mr. Combs engaging in activities with a rapper and an R&B singer, leaving many to speculate. According to reports and a video from DJ Academics, Diddy's alleged interactions include a Philly rapper who once dated Nicki Minaj and an R&B artist who performed at the Super Bowl and held a residency in Vegas. He did not, it, it did not say Meek Mill name. Yeah, Wait. his name, but look what it said. Oh. Oh, hold up. Never mind. It's Wait, what? enough to know. I forgot. Look, Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in the rapper five. That's redacted. Look, five. Redacted. He's a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. You know who that is. You know who that is. Yo, Meek. We were playing around with that Michael Rubin shit. But if you don't, if you've been tweeting about everything been tweeting about everything on planet earth if you don't get a twitter rant saying you about to get Lil rod killed you about to shoot up his block blow his mama's house up this is saying that you and diddy were fornicating the f hi my name is shanika and this what? is my husband Williams, and this is our son romario Oh, that shit just come the out. Philly rapper, who once had ties to Nicki Minaj and Usher, perfectly matches the description of the R&B singer with the Super Bowl performance and Vegas residency. It's like a puzzle falling into place seamlessly. Even though Meek isn't explicitly... Well, celebrities be knowing this shit gonna come out before it hit the fan. Um, um, Nicki Minaj was on Soldier Boy. Nicki Minaj and Soldier Boy was on live. And I think Nicki Minaj asked her some about, you know, G-A-Y rappers and stuff like that before this shit came out. Maybe no mentioned. It's pretty evident who he's allegedly been involved with. And let me tell you, the Internet isn't turning a blind eye to this. But hold on. There's more juicy details. Lil Rod's revelations paint a vivid picture of yacht parties and mansion escapades involving younger women and workers. And apparently... Diddy, Meek, and Usher aren't just bystanders. They're allegedly caught up in this whirlwind of scandal and legal battles. There's no telling where this roller coaster ride will end. When news of the lawsuit hit the internet, it was like a bombshell, leaving people in disbelief. 
Meek Mill, the same guy who's been throwing shade and projecting a macho image, turns out to have been playing an entirely different game behind closed doors. Talk about a plot twist. The internet exploded with memes and criticism aimed at Meek from all angles. Today, we raise a glass to the rise and fall of Meek Mill's career, marking the end of an era while another narrative unfolds, connecting dots between Diddy and a past incident involving Jewish billionaire Michael Rubin making Meek Mill perform bunny hops. It's all starting to make sense now. So yes, the truth has finally come to light, and Meek Mill has some explaining to do. It's a stark reminder that the music industry's behind-the-scenes reality can be far from what meets the eye. Meek Mill is in a full-blown social media meltdown, seeming to have lost his composure entirely. Unable to handle the backlash he's been receiving, as soon as he caught wind of the unfolding situation, he unleashed a tirade. He's crying foul, portraying himself as the victim, alleging that there's a concerted effort to bring down a successful black man. But let's face it, what's truly at stake here is the exposure and accountability seems intent on exacerbating the situation with his erratic behavior. In one of his rants, he wrote about his interactions with women in a manner that's both crass and dismissive. He then veers into bizarre territory, making cryptic references and accusing others of distorting his words to portray him in a negative light. His accusations fly in all directions, with claims of edited tweets and attacks. As a small business owner, you're juggling the job of five people. Well, Using constant context, crazy, smart, automated yeah, tools. Looking, it's like it's having a team good. of experts. Attempts to tarnish his image. It's a chaotic scene. With then got up there and did that shit. So many rappers probably, you know, went through that door. Everybody get a choice, you know, and then you get up there and do that shit. And, but you, you knowing that you're wrong. You don't know you're supposed to be doing this shit. Now you don't know what to do and shit. Doing all doing that shit for fame. With Meek seemingly grasping at straws to salvage his reputation amidst mounting criticism. Everyone else was out cold. But Diddy, Meek, and the vigilant bodyguard, taking on the role of detective, remained awake and managed to capture the entire incident on tape. It's akin to a scene ripped from the script of a sensational movie, leaving everyone utterly stunned. Meanwhile, John Deal has been divulging all the juiciest details, heating up the gossip mill like never before. There's an actual photo circulating of them sporting identical outfits, and fans are absolutely reveling in it. These allegations seem to have them firmly in their grip now. Additionally, there's some deep analysis going on, with one observer remarking on Meek's body language towards Diddy, suggesting a submissive vibe, almost as if he's claiming him as his own. The overall energy, they say, is rather feminine, amplified by their coordinated attire, which presents them as a unified entity akin to a couple. Meanwhile, Jean chimed in about the streets of Philly, emphasizing how reputation holds immense weight there, making Meek's cozying up to Diddy all the more eyebrow. There's more craziness afoot. Rumors are swirling that Meek's Google search history has unearthed some intriguing finds. Yeah. Now Meek is playing the blame game, pointing fingers squarely at Diddy for allegedly leaking the video to divert attention from his looming legal trouble. His Google search history got G-A-Y-P-O-R-N. With the feds, let's face it, men. Those charges are no laughing matter. They could land Diddy in prison for years. Meek is convinced that Diddy is trying to make him the scapegoat, and he's thirsting for Revan, even if it means taking matters to the streets. While Diddy himself hasn't spoken directly, his lawyer Holly stepped forward, asserting that Lil Rod is nothing but a fabricator seeking a hefty payout through a baseless $30 million lawsuit. And I ain't bashing him, you know, I ain't bashing him, I don't bash, I'm not gay phobic, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not phobic, I'm not, I'm not bashing him. It's each his own, it's just... Stop fronting, you know. Holly maintains that the claims made by Lil Rod are pure fiction, backed by overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Despite attempts to communicate this to Lil Rod's lawyer, Tyrone Blackburn, they've been met with silence, prompting them to address the allegations in court. And just when you thought the drama might simmer down, Orlando Brown swoops in with some serious accusations against Meek Mill and Diddy during an interview with No Jumper, bluntly labeling them as gay rappers and unleashing a barrage of bombshells. Why would they not have when they're gay rappers? They. Do you think Meek Mill's gay? We all know he's gay. Meek Mill should definitely consider suing, just like his name was withheld. However, the information provided was vague, labeling a Philadelphia rapper who once dated Nicki Minaj, which doesn't rank high among the many things in Diddy's case. Who's we? Rick Ross knows he's gay. I didn't know. 
news to me. Everybody, Rick Ross knows. You think Rick, Rick Ross would sign a gay rapper? Rick Ross knows he's gay. Is what I said. Everybody know he forcibly outing someone in court as queer or a victim without direct confirmation is questionable. Diddy has been facing legal challenges left and right, and it's about time he faces consequences. One thing's certain. This drama isn't going away anytime soon. With Meek Mill gearing up to take on Diddy, who knows what's next? Share your thoughts on whether Meek should sue Puff Daddy. And if you enjoyed this video, one good way that you can help build urgency in the sale is asking what are called consequence questions. Now that's called an in crazy, crazy, she crazy. Absolutely, squad. And yo, real quick, before I let you guys go, there was a part mentioned in the video about Meek doing bunny hop. Yeah. And, and this is what I'm saying. He's a volunteer. And what you do in the dark will always come to light, yo. He's not a victim. No way in hell is Meek Mill's a victim. No, he's not. He had a choice, man. Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. Count out loud. Huh? Now this is this is emasculating right here. I mean, I will pay you. I will give you some bread. Are you beat me in tennis? I will give you some bread. Yeah. Salute to my guys. Salute to my guy that used to play tennis back in the days in Harlem. Even my girl Chanel. Chanel. Salute to Chanelli. We used to play tennis all of the time. Ain't no way in the world I was gonna bunny hop because I lose a tennis match. But this is emasculating right here. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't cheat on buddy hops. They suck. Your buddy hops suck. You got Why are you doing buddy hops, Meek? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. They get a kick out of it. They, these are billionaires. They get a kick out of it just so you can show your fans how you want to rap tough and you want. We gonna show your fans you bunny hopping for a billionaire. Shout out loud. This is crazy. Look how they recording them. Huh? And they just recording them. Like, look at the slaves. Look, sucking and jiving. Keep going. Sucking and, and these be the people that child Keep worship. Going. Keep going. These be the folks and the individuals that child worship. They word is bond. You know what I mean? They put a little post, put a picture of them, and they put a little post or a saying or quote on social media. And it's, oh, that's the truth. That's the facts. And then this, they they living like this. <laughs> Sad, y'all. Guys, I ain't going to hold y'all much longer. Y'all wrap up, strap up, drink responsibly. How AI helped me get eight hours of work done in two. My calendar used to look like this. Messy, unorganized, and with a ton of overlap. And get some uh, people that people can think about, you know? Paint pictures that can think about. All right, it's your girl, Lex P, and I'm here with Wale at All Urban Central. Prince was at the parties and on the yacht. I ain't heard nothing else, but the way Diddy get out made me think. Everybody, everybody, everybody,
What if I told you that you can sign 20 new high ticket clients in the next 180 days on a complete pay on results? Yo, what's good? It's Frankie Diamonds TV reporting for FKZ TV News. So on this Monday morning, um, of course, everybody kind of disappointed with J. Cole, his light skin actions, bowing out to Kendrick like that. And speaking of that, um, academics was going off on the J. Cole situation and Meek asserted himself and he's going off talking about man see the white man pays you to destroy the rap community and this and that like man we ain't even that ain't even what was on man we just want to see some competition here but nonetheless he decides and while he's calling out academics for destroying the rap community from the inside you calling out one of your label mates and i know i'm living on another planet because i didn't even realize mmg was still like popping like that i'm like yo i forgot about mmg and they was label mates but nonetheless He's upset because Dean Stay Ready uh, took a photo with Wale recently. He didn't like this photo. And now he wants to declare war <laughs> on Wale. I don't know. These two cats was at WrestleMania this past weekend. Maybe they in that spirit all of a sudden. But he's calling out Wale on this Monday, uh, the Eclipse Day. And he goes and says, Wale never liked me. Now I'm going to treat him like the streets every time I see him. Three E's on it. I gave him a thousand chances. These guys be thinking they linking with the enemy, called him a clown. I would have knew the other day I would have stretched you, pause. <laughs> That's not the right thing. He wouldn't stretch nothing, man. He be getting real, make no sense. For me to be saying right now, uh, he says, I feel in a way I would have made Wale dip. He trying to take pics with Ruben, like a groupie. Now he's sitting around with bums in Philly, ops. This is my thing. like. Meek is like 30, mid, mid 30s, gotta be. You still you still got ops? Like, come on, bro. Like, I don't know. But anyone who could take him serious that's really the beef with him, if you want to do that, you can. Wale, of course, res you know, responded the way Wale typically would. I mean, Wale's not a street cat. Uh, and he says, when you get in other people's business, unserious drama 90% of the time, you know, these people are friends. Yeah. You get involved, and next thing you know, you looking silly. So I'm going to mind my business on this happy Monday and go on you know and meek is just continues to tweet throughout the day uh it's really his therapy because it ain't even really that while they hang hung out with um dean because dean been having interviews too but he's been exposing me but he ain't been like bashing meek he's still like you know it's just the other situations the, the other the other mother allegations got got him oh uh, he 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 Discombobulated. You know what I'm saying? We had arguments before years back, but I came in this game, get money with him. I'm not holding any grudges against my people. Goes on and on. You know, Ross, B, Wale, they whole history and they whole foundation, how they came of age. But like I say, this to me, this really stems with his issue with academics, if anything. Uh, and this is where he's pissed off at because this guy, Dean Stay Ready, uh, was taking jabs at him in the academics post and he can't stand academics and i'm like well do you, were they two just put the gloves on already like act and, and meek and just get it over with like we get it y'all y'all rock with each other it is what it is but now you know meek has just become a joke as far as the way people look at him his credibility has gone he's on here begging for validation you know begging for street credit against i'm like y'all forget i was raised in in jail you know what I mean? Philadelphia. I'm like, bro, we, <laughs> you almost, what, you 35, 36 years old, still begging for, for street credit, still bragging about rollies. Like, there's been no growth. It's a reason why that album with him and Ross, they dropped at the end of the year. It didn't do much. There's no growth, man. These cats are still rapping about the same stuff they was doing 10, 15 years ago. No, no growth. All you see him doing is, is doing silly stuff. And constantly just being the butt of jokes. Like he, from everything you could think of, he's just like, he's he's a walking embarrassment. I get secondhand embarrassment when I look at Meek Mill. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? he Everything about him is cringe. You just can't uncorny somebody like that, bro. You know what I mean? I, I kind of pity for him sometimes. He just can't help himself. You know what I mean? But now with all of this Diddy stuff, you know what I mean? He's the, he's the punchline right now. And he's tired of being ridiculed, but... 
Yeah, it is what it is, bro. You can't be mad at people for taking pictures with other people. Like, it's like you, you said it yourself. He's saying that him and Wale, Wale always had some kind of animosity towards him. He feels like Wale was envious because his career took off and he was more successful. He goes on and on. Like I said, he's just, bro, he's been tweeting nonstop all morning. Like, you can't even keep up with it. Now he's talking about deleting tweets. Like, real. Real ratchet female hood rat behavior from me, man. That's what he's acting like right now. But let me know what y'all think. Uh, reporting for FKZ TV News, Frankie Diamonds TV. I'm out. Y'all know the MREC room etiquette? Peace. You now tuned in to MREC TV. Turns out that Nicki Minaj may have tried to warn us about Diddy two years before all these lawsuits started coming in. And allegedly, Nicki knows a thing or two about her ex Meek Mill's relationship with Diddy. Hey, what's up, King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, Daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. Rumors about Diddy and Meek are nothing new. However, the situation yeah. recently took a different turn when Diddy's former producer, Rodney Jones, filed an explosive lawsuit alleging that Diddy has been running a Rico enterprise and had physical relationships relationships with famous rappers and R&B singers, allegedly including Meek Mill and Usher. Now, meanwhile, a clip of Nicki Minaj resurfaced yes. where she seemingly hints at Meek allegedly being on the DL. Do you think it's a lot of undercover brothers She's in the me. industry? <laughs> we don't know about that. Because I do. It came out. Look, look. How did Justin Bieber and The Rock get so damn rich what? so quickly? Well, it's because they make a special... <laughs> I don't hear none of them who was at Diddy's shit toasting with that champagne every year, having speeches with man. Nobody speak up for this man or nothing. The image yourself after the gay painter. Big homie want to look like a gay painter. What are we talking about here? We're talking about possibly. He wants to look like a gay painter. So, it looks like 50 Cent finally got answers to the questions everyone is asking now, aka, where on earth is Jay-Z when his bestie needs him? It's been over a week since Diddy's homes got raided by the feds, and he had to run into hiding, and we still haven't heard a peep from all the so-called friends he used to party with when things were good, especially Jay-Z. Well, according to 50 Cent, it makes sense that Jay-Z has pulled a disappearing act, because if you think the feds have dirt on Diddy, just wait until you find out how much worse Jay-Z is. And y'all know how Sean Carter is? You could never, ever catch him slacking. But what we're wondering is, if it's bad enough that the Jay-Z had to go into hiding, just how deep does this thing run? And what does 50 Cent really know about it? Well, let's jump right into it. i tell you what, puppy. Your life is in danger. Because you know the secrets. Who's involved in that little secret room you guys participate in. Okay, at this point, we have to give it to 50 Cent for always asking the important questions and staying committed to trolling Diddy. Because really, where are Diddy's friends when he needs them? Where is Jay-Z? I mean, he's had- I feel like if Puff was a, if Puff was soft, like if they, if he was soft, they would have been knocked him off. But they know that he keep guns and he, that's why they came like that. The other people on the higher higher ups that motherfuckers don't know, you know what I'm saying? The people in the they would have been knocked him off, but they, you know, they know that he gonna put up a fight. You know? Had over a week to put out a statement, share a meme, gif, or literally anything to show support for his dear friend Diddy, since his homes got raided by Homeland Security and his children were put in cuffs. But it's been radio silence from Hov since then, and 50 Cent has been asking questions. A day after Diddy's homes got raided, 50 shared a photo of Jay Z on a milk carton with the caption, "Anybody seen Jay?" Puff said he ain't answering his phone. LOL. Then he shared another post with a photo of Jay. Jay-Z waving. Captioned, here is Jay-Z last reported scene waving at Puffy Jet. I'm not even gonna lie. It's crazy that Jay-Z has left Diddy hanging because everything seemed cool when Diddy used to host all those all-white parties that Jay-Z and Beyonce used to attend all the time. And what happened to all those times Diddy and Jay have been all suited up drinking champagne? I really can't expect nobody to come out and say nothing. Puffy barely saying something, so y'all can't expect nobody to and toasting to black excellence. Even Boozy had to point out that it's weird and sad that none of Diddy's friends have supported him since his troubles started. I don't hear none of them who was at Diddy's shit toasting with that champagne every year, having speeches with man. Nobody speak up for this man or nothing. When you're on top of the world, 
it's a celebration. When you're on the bottom, it's a denialation. Same motherfucker you see going up, you gonna see coming down. All the motherfuckers, all with them suits on, with they cuffs up, ain't nobody saying nothing. They ain't fool. Like, as soon as they say something, they in the crosshair, fool. Boy, this world, boy, this world, boy. Fifty Cent reacted to Boozy's comments by sharing a photo of Epstein's face mixed with Diddy's with the caption. Boozy said, "Where the f is his friends? They not saying nothing because they didn't know he was recording everything." L O L. Wait till I get the tapes. Fifty Cent previously <coughs> talked about how he would pay top dollar to get the tapes. Homeland Security allegedly confiscated from Diddy's homes. The other day, before he even said, I was like, "Somebody gonna get them tapes. Motherfuckers with some money, he was. They gonna get them." They gonna, you know, people have us, they gonna get them tape. These, these motherfuckers, these, they sell that shit. Elite Alongside firearms, laptops, yeah, and other gadgets. As y'all must have heard by now, investigators allegedly seized several boxes and bags full of evidence. In a post on IG, 50 shared a screenshot showing a news clip of a highlighted section of Lil Rod's lawsuit that read, Mr. Combs had hidden cameras in every room of his home. I'm saying all the people in higher places, they said the prince was at um diddy parties and all type of you know elite people like they probably paying to get the footage they self like hold on get that footage has recordings of several celebrities artists music label executives and athletes engaging in illegal activity these individuals were recorded without their knowledge and consent mr combs possesses compromising footage of every person who has attended his freak off parties and his house parties the post was captioned shaking my head this is gonna be so good what you want to bet i'm you gonna lie, somebody gonna make so much money you know, selling them, selling, selling that footage. But get these tapes. I'll pay top dollar for them. You've been over there? I don't go to puffy parties. Well, folks are saying the reason why no one is coming out to support Diddy is that his so called friends, including Jay Z, are not happy about the fact that he was secretly recording them while they were doing all their deeds. But they actually shouldn't have been surprised because, you know, there's no honor among thieves. It looks like Diddy tried to pull a fast one on his friends, and when push came to shove, everyone decided. Dog, he's so shiesty, dog. He did that shit on purpose, dog. Threw them parties and came up with that shit. Like, we're going to record people while they comfortable, you know what I'm saying? While they're not doing all the drugs, doing all type of shit behind the scenes. Dog to protect their behind and leave Diddy hanging. And before you start wondering why 50 is so focused on Jay, out of all the people Diddy has been friends with in the industry, you have to remember that 50 also has beef with Jay-Z. Once upon a time, 50 Cent, Diddy, and Jay-Z used to be among the three biggest MCs in New York. That link up gave us the icon. Yeah, them, 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 they definitely did it to Puff. They did it to Puff. That's why he, they turned them out iconic I get money track but along the line 50 fell out with Jay-Z and Diddy for whatever reason probably because 50 just couldn't handle the number of dark things the other two had going on since 50 started beefing with Jay-Z he has never missed an opportunity to call him out one time he even talked about how Jay-Z has a god will happen to this guy if the government will let it happen it will bring the world to self-destruction you know, to complex and thinks he's better than everyone because of his money. And then another time when he was asked to describe Jay-Z in one word, he just said, good business. Another time he threw shade at Jay for not being original and instead trying to model himself after gay painter Basquiat. The image yourself after a gay painter. Okay. Big homie want to look like a gay painter. What are we talking about here? We're talking about Basquiat. He wants to look like a gay painter. Mm. Oh my God, I think I know where we're going with so, this. So, you don't need a soothsayer to tell you that 50 Cent and Jay-Z are not on good terms at all. But you see Jay and Diddy? Nah, those two have remained besties over the years, and they have never been afraid to show off their love for each other. Diddy always had a picture of himself and Jay-Z on his website, and now he has this cute little speech Jay-Z gave in his honor for the montage for Diddy's Lifetime Achievement Award. And here he is, proudly telling everyone that the only two people allowed to call him by his government name, Sean, are his mama and Sean Carter. Also, whenever either of them hosts a party the other is sure to be on the guest list that's why people found it weird when jay-z conveniently decided not to host his annual rock nation party this year which many people felt was just his way of trying to avoid being seen in public with diddy and even going back before that people have noticed that jay-z has been keeping a low profile since cassie's lawsuit dropped the only time we've ever really them, them scs the sean carter the sean 
Sean Combs. Isn't it super creepy that Jay-Z knew about all the things R. Kelly was doing with Aaliyah, but also with all them other girls and women that were working on him and still did a whole album and tour with him? Jay-Z certainly has a very interesting style of picking his friends. And at this point, we really should be calling Diddy, R. Kelly, and Jay-Z the triplets from hell because, yes, all of Diddy's friends have abandoned him. But you know who has come out to show support for Diddy all the way from prison? You guessed it, R. Kelly. In between his prison chores or whatever they do in there, R. Kelly spared the time to come out and let everyone know he simply doesn't believe Diddy did any of the things he's being accused of doing because he believes the system is just trying to punish men like them for being, in his words, flagrant. They're laughing and making, making comedian jokes and doing all other shit on the radio and everything else, but they ask to be next. Yeah. For so yeah, that's I'm really so silly. stupid. He's so stupid, they don't even realize the move that's going on. He's crazy. Yeah, he I mean, it. that's why I don't believe none of this shit. I'm no, I told him straight up, bro. You can tell me about anybody. You can tell me the, on the news, the weather, the, the sky is doing between the shit, though. Because I'm in it now. I know what they do. However, folks were not here for R. Kelly's comments at all because, apart from the obvious reason, a convicted offender coming out to support Diddy is not a good look at all, and they were just roasting him in the comments. Him and Shug are more focused on Diddy instead of serving their prison time. I'd be so irritated if R. Kelly were to support me in anything, with a crying emoji. That's enough proof that Diddy's guilty, so yeah, it's not looking good. But then again, it really makes you wonder if R. Kelly could come out to support his friend from prison. Why hasn't Jay Z said anything yet? Jay Z ain't asking the phone. <laughs> In this video 50 recently shared, he was trolling both Jay-Z and Diddy because Jay ain't picking up the phone. And really, the only reason why Jay-Z wouldn't be picking up the phone at this point is that he's trying to keep a low profile and not draw too much attention to himself. That's why, like I said earlier, 50 Cent was trying to get his hands on the tapes that were seized from Diddy's home raids because it'll probably have evidence of Jay-Z involved in some criminal things with Diddy. I mean, Jaguar Wright did say recently that Diddy has... Now I'm at five cars. The... Audi Q3, the Porsche Macan S, the 2022 allegedly turned over tapes of Jay-Z and Beyonce participating in freak-off sessions with Diddy. The reason why that's not such a stretch is that, as y'all know, Diddy has been seen hanging out with Jay-Z and Beyonce too many times to count. Like, they really are thick as thieves. But I guess Diddy really fumbled by taking those tapes and even threatening to use them as leverage if things go south. Remember how, in Lil Rod's lawsuit, Diddy was accused of bragging about his connection to several powerful people in the industry and even said that he was going to leverage his relationship with T. D. Jakes to launder his image after the lawsuits? Well, that plan has clearly backfired because, allegedly, some of Diddy's friends are already talking to the He did change his name from Mr. Love, Love, to Love album the feds and are ready to snitch on him if it comes to a trial. A source for NBC News reported that three women and a man have been interviewed by federal officials in Manhattan in relation to allegations of S trafficking, assault, and the solicitation and distribution of illegal narcotics and firearms. The source also revealed that interviews with three other subjects are also scheduled. And in case you needed further proof that Diddy really is alone, remember how Lil Rod's lawsuit named some big wig executives as part of Diddy's alleged RICO enterprise. One of those people he named is former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Habta Mariam, who was accused of attending Diddy's infamous parties and being present when Diddy and his sons were drugging workers, many of whom were under 18. Well, word on the street is Ethiopia Habta Mariam is ready to snitch on Diddy in exchange for her name being dropped from the lawsuit. She even recently released a statement distancing herself from Diddy, his kids, his parties, and whatever mess he's gotten himself in. The statement read, contrary to the allegations of the first amended complaint regarding to my alleged presence at Mr. Combs' homes in Miami and New York at all alleged parties at which underage girls and S workers were present and being drugged. I have never visited either of those homes, and I have never attended any party at any of Mr. Combs' homes other than a single black tie event in Los Angeles on June 26, 2022, celebrating his Lifetime Achievement Award from BET. She also said the only time she had ever visited Diddy's LA home was for meetings in connection with the license 
license agreement between Motown Records and Love Records, and she didn't see any of the wild things that allegedly used to take place at Diddy's homes. According to 50 Cent, that's one of the reasons why Jay-Z is currently in hiding. In fact, as we speak, Jay might already be in contact with the feds to see about covering his tracks and getting rid of anything that links him to Diddy. Now, what's interesting about all this is that people have been speculating for some time now that Jay-Z is going to be the next to be exposed after they're done with Diddy. When YouTuber Storm Monroe talked about it a few weeks ago, it seemed like he was just hating. But it looks like everything that was predicted is now coming to pass, and 50 Cent is having a good laugh over it because he also called it a long time ago. However, some people are saying 50 Cent is trolling Jay-Z and Diddy to hide his own skeletons that could be revealed after the Diddy raid. I mean, as much as they're now enemies, 50 Cent used to be close with Jay-Z and Diddy once upon a time. So if Jay and Puffy did anything back then, it's likely 50 Cent also participated in them. By the way, didn't we all just find out that he allegedly took advantage of his baby mama, Daphne Joy? After Lil Rod updated his lawsuit against Diddy on March 25th, we found out Daphne Joy was allegedly one of the S workers on Diddy's payroll alongside Young Miami and other women. As the professional troll that he is, 50 didn't waste any time going after his baby mama on social media. He threw shade at her in a tweet saying, I didn't know you was a S worker, you little S worker. LOL, yo, this is a movie. In another tweet, he said, you moved a mile away in hopes of having another baby with me, but I was busy. So you moved back and then you started receiving money from Brother Love. Now here we are, you little S worker. 50 Cent was also allegedly seeking full custody of his son because, well, he didn't want his son to be in that environment, and that's fine. However, Daphne Joy absolutely gagged him with her response when she went off on him on Instagram. In her post, she slammed 50 Cent for taking everything as a joke, even when it puts the lives of people around him in danger. Then she asked him, how would you feel if Sire was the one in handcuffs for nothing? Seems like she was referencing Diddy's kids, who had to be put in handcuffs while the raid was ongoing. Daphne then went on to call 50 a terrible father who only saw his son 10 times out of the two years he lived literally one mile away. Then she added, let's put the real focus on your true evil actions of blanking me and physically blanking me. You are no longer my oppressor and my God will handle you from this point on. You have permanently damaged the last hope I had for you as a father to preserve our family with these last and final false claims made against me. You have broken our hearts for the last and final time. You, okay, 50's name hasn't come up in relation to Diddy's freak offs or any tapes or whatever, but that doesn't mean he's the innocent guy he's trying to paint himself as. Also, many people felt 50 was wrong for speaking to the mother of his child in that manner, especially over claims that haven't been proven. Whatever happened to innocent until proven guilty? Besides, Daphne appearing in a lawsuit accusing her of being one of Diddy's S workers is arguably not nearly as bad as 50 Cent. Seeing a photo of his son Jackson and a friend and dropping a comment that said, if both these little ninjas got hit by a bus, I wouldn't have a bad day. So a lot of people started speculating that 50 might have some skeletons of his own that he's trying to hide by shifting focus away from himself and instead trolling Diddy and Jay-Z. One person said, good, I kept saying he's about to be exposed. Hope all his shows are canceled. He's an annoying steroid B. And this other person said, don't trust any of these men, even the ones laughing at Diddy. In any case, 50's name still hasn't shown up in any of these documents. And he's not the one who has been partying with Diddy for the last couple of decades. That person is Jay-Z. And while we've not heard a peep from him since this whole thing started going down, folks have come up with different theories, explaining why Jay-Z is not out here trying to defend his friend. Jay-Z getting rid of his evidence. Jay-Z may be the main one egging Ish on. He's just as evil and wicked, but wants to be like he's so great and still standing after all these years. But do you think Jay-Z is really hiding because of this whole Diddy saga? Or is 50 bringing this up just to hide his own dirty secrets? Share your thoughts in the comments below and then check out this next video. Well, you're a thief. Okay. You're Come a thief. Come to the office, man. Come to the office so we can straighten it out then. Yo, how we just, we just three guys okay. you don't yo, even yo, mess yo. with. You it's had your ace doing cool publishing. You, you, you call me whatever you want. You won't let his publishing go. I'm at the office. He cut it. He cut you it. You won't let your man's publishing go. You won't argue in front of New York. That's the way you want to do. Do you own your man's publishing go? I nothing to y'all, man. Do you own and, your and man's publishing? New York, New York could believe it or whatever. I don't Do you own your man's publishing? Know, I can sleep good at night because I ain't never you did that to y'all. And if y'all ever want to Dog, you had a whole me, bunch of artists that had their own life on it, Puffy. Dog, you had a bunch of artists who careers no, never went right with you, dog. Be for real, dog. Look at the list. I don't want to be final. You the artist that did best for yourself. Look at your list, dog. 
Look at all the artists you dealt with. Look at the situation they dealt with. You know what? I'm not happy with you going. All right, Sean Combs, P Diddy, Puff Daddy, P Diddy, love. love, just love, I think, just love. Yeah. What is going on with Sean Combs? There's a lot going on, man. A lot to parse here. Although the more I try to research it to brief myself before talking to you, it's very little. Um, I think material, factual information that we can trust. I I think I've probably um, weeded through it and found a little bit, and you probably have. I hope a lot, but um, yeah. you shared a little bit with me earlier, which were actual complaints that I did read through fully. So, yeah, let's I know you want to do you want to give some bullet points on what's going on and then we'll go to the beginning. Yeah. Before we get started, just so everybody knows that Sean Combs is completely innocent until proven guilty. I'm a criminal defense attorney and I like to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Here at American Crime Podcast, what we're going to do is we're going to analyze the facts. And the only way to analyze the facts is through the actual legal document. That's all I refer to. I don't care what the internet says. I don't care what people say. I'm reading to you the actual legal document and what the allegations are. So let's go through it right now, right? The legal document you are referring to is a civil complaint filed by Mr. A producer called Rodney Jones, Little, Little Rod. Little Rod, yeah, Mr. So, Jones. Yeah. Mr. Jones brought this suit against well, against Puff up uh, against Puff P. Diddy. Well, let's just call him Sean Combs. Let's make it against easy. Mr. Combs. Yeah. And 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 by the way, uh, so just to give you a little background, and I'm gonna go into the highlight reel on this one, but this originally started with Cassie Ventura, Cassandra Ventura's lawsuit. Yes, Cassie. Cassie is a was a singer. She had the Me and You uh song that did really well. He produced that album. And she filed a lawsuit under the New York uh, Sexual Victim Survivors Act. She had like a statute of limitation and she filed it before the deadline, you know, came about. Yeah. And she made all these allegations and then he settled it, which, which I and think was a big mistake for P. Diddy to do that. The next day. And because now the sharks saw the blood in the water. Can we rewind? Yeah. So before that moment, it's we're talking, this is late last year. He is flying high. I mean, life is looking amazing for him, right? Has always been looking amazing. For it's him. always looked amazing for him. We know him from growing up, and he sure. produced the albums for Biggie Smalls. He created kind of that Biggie allure in the in production of that, yeah. of Biggie's hits. He was dancing in the videos. Suge and I talked a little <laughs> bit of smack about that. Yeah. So that's his and arch. The Bible words, yeah. That might be his arch enemy if you look at East Coast, West Coast rap. Yeah, and 50. 50 is an arch enemy now too. Mm -hmm. But all that being said, Oct you know, September or October of last year, 2023, he was a billionaire doing great, no real terrible headlines that were um, mainstream news. And then everything was going okay. Private jet here that I'm sure parties, we, his famous white parties in the Hamptons have been a thing of myth for a long time. Also Florida and LA. And then, Cassie drops this bomb. Well, you're forgetting 1999. There was a shootout at a club, and Puff Daddy was in, in trouble then, too. He was going out with J-Lo. For sure he's been in trouble before. Thank yeah. you for the correction. Yeah, he's been in trouble. This and, and He's, he's been, been in trouble. He's been, he was there when Biggie got shot. He was there when, allegedly, he shot somebody, but he was right. acquitted. So, you're right. So he's been around a lot of smoke, but we don't know whether there was fire. Very fair point to be. So he's been circling around a lot of different charges throughout the years, different yeah. potential crimes that could dodging happen. charges for years. Ooh, okay. Dodging. So Your take clear. is that he's been dodging. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's fair. had excellent representation. Ben Braffman was his lawyer in, in uh, okay. New York. Okay. Currently today, as we sit here, yeah. there's no charges yet filed at all. I know that you have a lot of thoughts on this. I do predictions, but what I guess I meant to say was skies were relatively clear October of 23, and he did not know what was about to come down. Now, suddenly, the first domino in the series of dominoes was Cassie's lawsuit. Yeah. Cassie's a multi-talented singer, um, performer, beautiful young lady who he discovered, you could say, when yeah. she was 19 years old. And... What did she hit him with of November in November of 23? What was it? Tell because that started this whole thing. Well, my, my understanding is that she hit him with a lot of different things, including uh forcible sex acts. She claimed that yeah, he he beat her, 
He forced her to do, she forced, he forced uh, Cassie Ventura to have sex with other men while Puff Daddy actually watched and allegedly masturbated and got off on that. Look, we've all known that P. Diddy has been a freak for years. I mean, you know, anybody that you, when you, again, this is not a crime. And, and P. Diddy or Sean Combs. There's a lot of freaks. Sean Combs is innocent, so proven guilty. But there's there's a a lot of people that are saying that they, they heard things and they knew things and they're being quiet. And that raises a lot of suspicions. But I don't want to go into speculation. I, you know, Tony, I want to go into straight into the, the lawsuit. Okay, but, but, but the first legal document, just so we go back to the beginning of the yeah. story, was Cassie's complaint. Cassie's that, complaint. That was a legal document. It's a civil document. Yes. Just so everybody understands, this is not the cops coming after you. Right. This is just somebody filing a thing against, me, let's say, me. God, yeah. let's not even use me as an example. Against Sean Combs mm. saying, hey, this guy abused me in this way, bullet point one. Charge number two, he did this offense. Charge number three, he did this offense. It's a civil case. I want money. I want to be made whole. I want maybe some kind of damages brought. I want him to suffer somehow. But it's not a criminal case that she brought. No, but it opened up the door to criminal cases. It did open the door. And, and I, I found it interesting when I read that complaint, the Cassie complaint today, and I read all the way through it. And I know the Mr. Jones one is more maybe detailed, but Cassie was kind of the first domino against Sean Puffy Combs. Tell me why it does this. You as a criminal defense attorney from your expertise is that even though she's bringing this civil case and she's filing it against him, she references and bootstraps to all these criminal codes. See, this is how, this is how the government works. The government is like a sleeping giant and the government listens. And if the government hears something, it acts. So when the lawsuit was filed by Cassie, it raised the eyebrows. But then when the little Rod Jones came out, it really raised the eyebrows. Now, to go back to Cassie, all right? So Cassie's lawsuit, in my opinion, was a blunder on the part of Sean Combs to settle. He should have never settled that because by settling that, in my opinion, it invited the sharks who saw the blood to go after P. Diddy. And now it opened the floodgates. Now it's open season on, on Sean Combs. You don't think he should have settled? No. So she hit him with this complaint, legal complaint or civil lawsuit. He settled the next day. Because here's what I think happened. I think based on, and again, I'm not a civil attorney. I'm a criminal defense attorney, but I, I have experience in civil law and I understand civil law. My understanding is that um, there was threats going on with by both sides. We're going to sue you, Sean, if you don't pay us. He called his bluff. Sean said, go ahead. I don't believe you're going to do it. I don't, I don't believe that Cassie's going to come out and say all these things because it's going to embarrass the crap out of herself. So he called her bluff. And Cassie went through and Cassie was like, okay, I'm going to expose you, including do myself. Know, do we know that for sure? Or is this, this is all a speculation little, on my behalf a little, based, based on the, uh, the timeline. So educated actually, speculation, educated speculation yeah. and guessing going on. But it part. makes yeah. sense. What you're saying is she, um, probably gave him a chance. Of course there's a demand letter in civil law. You send a demand. I demand this. And the, and the other lawyer said, we're not going to do it. And they filed a lawsuit. Yeah. And that's when he shut it down immediately said, you know what? This is real. She really didn't want to do it to him, but, you know, he was blocking her with her music career and shit like that. She couldn't. She had no choice. We're going to shut this thing down. So, um, do we know? really did it to herself. You should have just let her go, man. You already, you dealing with other people. She gone. She went her way. You went her way. She went her way. You went your way. Let her do her music, man. Know how much he paid her to shut it down? Oh, you know, I I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't for like seven digits minimum, maybe even ten digits, ten million dollars or more. I, you know, he's well, worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know. I don't know. But as soon that. as he did that, it seems like other people, whether justified or not, they saw blood in the. Of water. course, that that's my opinion. I would have never settled that suit. Had he never settled that suit, I don't think anything would else would have happened. And I want to point something out to you also. So when you say, if I go on TV right now and I say, Tony P is committing fraud, people are listening. And, and that's going to open up the floodgates with this lawsuit by injecting it in the system. It got noticed. Yeah. Like she, in her lawsuit in Cassie's first cause of action, sex trafficking under 18 USC section 1591. Okay, so you're putting the criminal code right there in front of the court, and you're saying, I'm not bringing a criminal action. I'm fucking suing him 
for civil damages. But here's the criminal code I think he violated. Do you know why they're doing that? Tell me. They're flagging the they're flagging the federal government. They're flagging him on the record and they're saying there was there was crimes committed and we want you to investigate. Typically and Civil complaints don't read like an indictment. That's what I'm saying. What and, and the reason they're doing this is a strategy so that they get the public aware and they get the government aware that there's illegal activities going on to the point where the government can't ignore it. Right. Yeah. So if you take a microphone like this and you go out in public and you tell people that there's violations of racketeering, <laughs> there's violations of illegal sexual activity, there's violations of minors that are being used for illegal sexual activity, that there's coercion of faith for the purposes of illegal sexual activity or transportation of sexual activity, guess what? The government's going to come after you. Mm -hmm. It's just plain and simple. She so, also mentioned human trafficking, both in New York state laws and under California state laws. Right. So she's throwing U.S. federal criminal codes out in her civil complaint. She's putting out state laws in her complaint that she's linking to. This is Cassie. And... Um, Sexual assault, you said that. Yes. Um, gender motivated violence, which is a New York statute. Yeah. Um, sexual harassment and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, she brings this civil case. He he settles it the next day, thinks he's squashing it. Right. You, you say, RJ, what a mistake. By Huge him. mistake. In fact, he's probably kicking himself in the ass saying I should have never settled that case to begin with. Because if he fought it, then yes, it would make things a little worse because now he's going to have to be deposed. And he doesn't want to be deposed. But on the flip side, if he is truly innocent, I would have told him, I said, Sean, did you do this? Because if he's told me, RJ, I didn't do this. I, I swear to you. I, then I would probably say, let's not settle this case. Let's be deposed and fight this case. Because if we settle this case right now, everybody's going to be coming after you. And in a nutshell, what is she saying he was doing? I mean, without going through, we talked about all the different um, causes of action she brought or, um, uh, yeah, causes of action. But in a nutshell, he was kind of using, by her allegations, reading Cassie's complaint, he was an older man with a lot of power, with a lot of respect in the business, with a lot of muscle, with a lot of maybe even violence behind him, and even battery and ability to hit and kick, if you believe her. Right. And so he used all of that to essentially control her entire life and to force her into a relationship with him and coerce might be more apropos and basically corner her into a long lasting sexual relationship with him, which he then expanded into weirder areas like having her um, physically be with other, other men that he recruited and that he actually had her recruit, which he also videotaped apparently. Where are those videos? Well, what we're, we're going to get into that. those videos may be confiscated from his house. The, they did a whole raid, a military style raid where they went in and they took all the computers, all the hard drives. But here's the thing with the Cassie thing. You know, she's, she was with him for 10 years. Why did she walk away? Why did she, why did she let that happen for 10 years? I'm going to hit you harder with that question when we get into Mr. Jones, by the way. Yeah. Well, it's into a fair question for Cassie as well. Right. Why didn't she? Why, you know, forced to do all or, these sex acts or, or is it regrettable sex acts? Did she do it and then regret it? And then how do we, yeah, it's an interesting point. Cause also you kind of read analysis that says she was coerced or forced into sex, sex acts. Otherwise he told her she would not be up for a Grammy. So what? Go okay. home. Go okay. Home. Go home. Is that force? No, I, not in my opinion. It's not physical force for sure. No. If we're going to steal man, her argument, she'll say, I didn't have an option. Of course the girl's got to go after her Grammy, but that's not rape. No. So, so let me explain something to you. If she's having sex because she thinks it's going to further her career and then she regrets it, that's not a crime at all. It could be a civil lawsuit. Absolutely. And some, it's way, an abuse of power. These, perhaps. I don't know, but it's not a crime. So that's why I'm telling so you. So that's not rape of any kind. If you were to psychologically trick a woman or corner a woman or use your power. or an authority. She works for your record label. You have her signed.
do a multi-million dollar deal, presumably. You hold the keys to the kingdom that she wants. Oh, so bad. That's a loaded question. So I would answer that question by telling you it depends on the facts of the case. If he forced her at any point in time physically or threatened her, it would be rape. Threatened her, but not, right. not so, physically. So rape is the un... I feel like he ain't forced nobody to S-E-X. He probably put Molly in a champagne. She ain't even know it. Probably did some shit like that. You know, but yeah consensual sexual act if she consented then it's not rape so right. let's just say and i'm not saying this happened let's just say he does some tucci i think they call it tucci uh ecstasy and that cocaine drug mix. that he yeah. really likes the, to do the drug of choice that he created uh, uh, that sean combs created a pink uh drug he ain't created now they're trying to say he created it they need to stop this shit man just keep this shit real man charge this man with the shit that he did man and throw good plan Hey, motherfucking create that shit, man. What the hell? Drug that you do, and that gets you basically in a sexual mood. If she was doing that to please uh, Sean Combs, and then she had regret about that, that's not rape. And the problem that I have as a criminal offense attorney is, why would you keep doing that over and over again when you when you have the door right there? Nobody's holding you there. Nobody's forcing you to keep going back. Now. She could make an argument in civil court that, you know, she felt compelled because, you know, like the Harvey Weinstein case that he was a person of power and uh, there was some gender discrimination. Sure. But is it a crime? No. Uh, in my opinion, again, I don't know the facts of the case, but certainly if there was a crime, you'd think the police would get involved, right, Tony, at some well, point? Listen, it's a really interesting question. And just from a legal doctrine standpoint, at what point is force for rape? purposes physical versus verbal versus threats well it could threats a, could be just verbal right sure like, i will do x so and so and so sure if, if maybe it, if it's the threat of physical harm if it happened one time i could probably say it was rape but she's making a contention that it happened more than once so my question to cassie is why didn't you just walk away the first time okay you got raped but over and over again I, it doesn't seem to me a, 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 she was participating. He probably promised Cassie, um, you know, a record deal, a big record deal, you know, a, a Grammy or, you know, for the, a number one hit. You know what I'm saying? We're going to make your shit a number one, you know. And she, 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 he definitely had to. She's an artist. She got music. She was a, you know what I'm saying? So that was her whole thing. You know, he probably just saw, you know, find a little chick you want to, you know, hang out with, have fun with, you know, do the thing. But <clears throat> she wanted to be, she wanted to be, you know, popping, a popping artist. And that's what she, she participated. Same thing as Lil Rod. He promised Lil Rod a Grammy. He, he participated. Everybody got mad when shit ain't go their way and they got to tell it. Criminal in nature. It seems to me that she was doing it to appease sean combs and then later on when sean combs didn't pay her what she wanted what she thought she was deserved she basically threw everything in the kitchen sink at him i wanted to show a little picture of the tucci you were talking about it's a drug at the same time that's right but at the same time she went her way and went and she got in a whole nother relationship he went his way got in plenty multiple relationships but at the same time she couldn't pursue her music career because he blackballed her which would that's what he do with all the artists that he can't take your publishing or take your shit. You know what I'm saying? You think about all the artists that Puff Daddy worked with, making a band and all these little young artists over the years, they all end up down the drain. Nobody made it. Nobody made it successful after dealing with him. Which um, is part of the, they have like locks and stuff like that. But yeah. He, made, he definitely made it hard on a lot. Complaint that Mr. Jones brings later, we're yeah. going to talk about, but we're just assuming here that during Cassie's time, this is probably also going on. She's making allegations of drug use, so I, I'm only assuming it's too, you know, I, again, these are all educated speculation on my part. Right. It's a pink drug combining ecstasy and cocaine, and it kind of looks like that. He ain't start that shit, and that shit down there, I think that shit started, that shit started in Florida. He definitely ain't created it's did he, did little, he invent that? I didn't even heard of that. You could mix ecstasy and coke together? People do that shit regularly, but um, 
Yeah, that's some um, but they they act like that's a rich people drug, you know. And it comes out to be a pink drug that makes you happy and horny at the same time. Sounds like a crazy night. Sounds like he invented something. And Sounds a, like Sean Combs invented a new drug that we didn't even know about. Tucci. How do you even get that name? Yeah. Is I mean, it from Stanley Tucci, the actor? I doubt it. It's spelled T-U-C-I. Yeah. So um, there was mention in Cassie's complaint against Sean Combs of a lot of different illicit drugs. Yeah. Now. Um, marijuana for sure, but that's not even illegal. Well, my bad. It ain't starting. I got to take that back. It didn't start in Florida, but like when it hit. United States, that's where it hit first, Florida. But that shit started like overseas and, um, you know, like um, UK and shit like that. Yeah. You go um, most places. Most like raves and shit like that. They, they, yeah. This is, yeah. Gummies, whatever. Who cares? Yeah. Um, what did they talk about? They talked about cocaine. They talked about ecstasy. They yeah. talked about lacing champagne with, that's right. with ecstasy. Right. What else? They, they mentioned All slew GHB, ketamine, and mushrooms. Um, so these are among the things that he's being accused of distributing. Okay? Right. Right. Well, so we know he had. That's just the, the drugs the choice, the drugs they like to do. That's what people like to do nowadays. Those are all the drugs rich motherfuckers like to participate in nowadays. Everything that he just named. Crazy parties. We know he had crazy ladies around that sure. like to party. Nothing, for sure. Nothing wrong with that. There was this pink powder on the table that I'm sure was a good time. Right. Um, and then all these other illicit drugs. Okay. Does that really mean he's distributing drugs? Well, Brendan Paul got arrested and he was his uh, mule, drug mule, allegedly at the airport. They they busted yeah. him with a lot of Not really and really, like both ways. He just bring the party tools, but you know, it's illegal. So they're going to act like he just, they, he just, he distributing <laughs> to party, even though he just, he ain't probably in charge of nobody or shit like that. He probably just, these are the party tools, but you know drugs so it looked like he had somebody bringing drugs everywhere he needed according to little rod's uh lawsuit that he needed the drug of choice everywhere he went and he had a private jet and it was very easy by the way if you have a private jet they don't have security clearance so you could just bring anybody on the right. plane you could bring dead bodies on the plane you could bring uh drugs on the plane you could do whatever you want but right. the feds were keen on this this time so they followed brendan paul because i believe they got confidential informant information that Brendan Paul was his drug meal. There, there's that wasn't a coincidence that he, they they definitely got confidential information. And what's so crazy is they catch his ass at the jet, getting on the jet with drugs. They arrested him at the airport. <laughs> they what, knew what was, was going there on. definitely a connection between Brendan Paul and Sean Combs though? Before, of course, before they arrested him, of course. Is he a person of interest only through the Sean Combs lens? I will tell you that the federal government will not arrest you unless they know that you committed a crime. Yeah, but if you're at the airport and you have drugs on you. How did he know he had drugs on he you? He might have got popped by the airport security. I don't think so. I the think dogs? It, I think in this case, they knew he was going to the airplane. They had inside. Again, I yeah. don't know. It's just my guess that they knew Brendan Paul was going to be delivering drugs to P. Diddy based on CI information. And we'll get into that, by the we'll way. We'll get into it. Yeah, confidential inform. But you know what I want to do right now, Tony, with your blessing. I'd like to go over some of the highlights in the case. Consider the it blessed. Let's go. All right. Before I do that, can I tell you, I love this tea I've been drinking, Oi Ocha. I, I'm drinking it now. I just, I've noticed you've had it every single episode and we haven't done that many episodes yet, yeah, but I, you've I, had it every single time. I, I, I've been drinking this for 20 years. Okay. What do you love about it? So uh, it's green tea. Uh, green tea is amazing for everything. It cures a lot of cancers, it, anxiety. I have high anxiety. Can I say we're not being paid to say this right now? Yeah. This is not an actual no, official not an ad, no. but you actually legitimately love this. I love, I'm not getting paid by this company. I'm I, know. Letting, <laughs> I know. I just I, want to clarify. I, I'm only advertising because I love it so much and it calms me down and it, and it helps me relax. How do you pronounce the name of the company? It's, 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 Oi Ocha. Oi Ocha. Are you guys listening out there? Are you going to make this guy's <laughs> official brand sponsor? And, or what? and uh, it's unsweetened green tea. And if one of these a day keeps the cancer away. Very I like nice. that. I love it. Yeah. So my understanding is based on reading the report, this uh, complaint, which is a hundred pages about, and I read it thoroughly. There's a lot of allegations and let's go through the allegations. So what? this is after he settled uh, Cassie, Mr. Jones came out with a complaint. Yeah. This is what you're about to read. Yeah. And I want to say big picture after Cassie, Jane Doe one came out, Jane Doe two came out, Jane Doe three came out, John Doe one came out. That's Mr. Jones. Yes. A bunch of people came out and said, me too. I also was assaulted and yeah. sexually trafficked and yeah. drugged. 
please go ahead. Give us the highlights of what he said. All right. So basically, um, little Rod- Rodney Jones is a producer. He was producing, I think, his love album or something. And he bought this lawsuit because, again, he went on the Internet and said, Sean Combs has not paid me. And I, just for Sean Combs defense, he never mentioned that Sean Combs did all these illegal activities. He just said, I haven't got paid. It's not fair. But then, you know, some time passed and they filed a lawsuit. And this is what is con- contending. He's contending that Sean Combs violated uh, RICO laws. What is RICO? That's the same thing that you charge mafia. RICO is the Racketeer Influence Corruption Act, which basically means that if I have a business, right, if I have a record company and I have record um, artists that are recording and I'm doing illegal activity under that umbrella, that whole business is illegal, Mm -hmm. okay? So kind of like think about Death Row Records Mm -hmm. and Suge Knight, Mm -hmm. right? So Suge Knight is, is running a recording studio and is dealing drugs and all that, but he happens to be a record producer and owner that could be considered Rico. So if you have an empire and you have minions doing illegal things, they could get you for Rico. Right. Makes sense. And and yeah, like you brought up the early gangs in Chicago, the Italian mobsters, New York city back in the day, you'd have like mobsters. I'm kind of exaggerating this, but you'd, you'd have like top dogs sitting at the top of an organization yeah, just secretly signaling the next move. Right, a certain color of pasta they ate that day, or right. whatever hug who they hugged or kissed. Secret little signals where no one's gonna say, "Yeah, he told me to go kill guy number one." Yeah. No one. That's right. So then the law said, "We we got to figure this out." So Rico, racketeering influenced corrupt corrupt organization. Yes. So, so hey, you didn't or- you may not have verbally ordered it or even written it down, but we know you signaled for all this to happen. We know you're the man behind all of this. Yeah. Even though we have no evidence of you doing any of it. Well, it's a conspiracy. Rico is a conspiracy allegation. So it's, you know, you could use what other people have done to prove that you are basically the head honcho that you're running the show and that you know everything in your organization is being done illegally, which is pretty easy and difficult. If you have cooperating witnesses, it could be very easy, but if you don't, it could be very difficult, but let's go, let's jump right into it. So Mr. Combs allegedly required Mr. Jones. I'm going to call Mr. Jones, Rodney Jones, uh, to record him constantly, which is not a crime. Uh, but according to, uh, Jones on several occasions, Jones, he took Mr. Jones cell phone and, uh, Mr. Jones secured hundreds of hours of footage of audio recordings of, of Combs and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. And for the for the people that are on the internet, if you're asking where I got that information from, you could look on page seven of 73. And I know what the internet's going to say. These are all allegations. And yes, Mr. Combs is innocent until proven guilty. I'm just l- telling you the allegations. So he allegedly has all these videos of illegal activity. Ne- next. Can I ask a question on yeah. that? Because I could, if I wanted to really badly, I could walk into the courthouse tomorrow morning and file a criminal, uh, a civil. They say you're innocent to prove guilty, but they treat you like you're guilty to prove innocent. Complaint just identical to this. Yes. Against you. Yes. And I could say I've filmed this guy for podcasts for hours and hours and hours, and I have evidence of him doing really illicit illegal activities i could say that sure they'll write that in the complaint and it'll be printed and you'll read it is there any kind of evidentiary bar to making that claim or is it simply at this point just a claim no there's a there's there's ethical rules that you can't just make things up unless you have good faith corroboration i can't just make things up about you because then what happens is your lawyer is going to sue me for attorney's fees so you think that Lil Rod's lawyer in helping him bring this civil suit had to have done some filtering and some kind of evidentiary sort of um, analysis to say this is good enough to put on paper and file with the court? Yeah, Correct. I, I think his name is Troy Blackburn. So Mr. Blackburn sat down with Mr. Jones and talked to him and he, and he believed him and he asked him, he said, listen, if we're going to bring this against Mr. Combs, I need corroborating evidence. And according to Blackburn, which who was, who was interviewed recently, he saw the videos. He said he's going to back it up. So black he's not likely to lie about. If that. he does, he's in trouble. I mean, he he's will a be a member of the bar. He he's, will be disbarred. He's not going to. I'm letting you know he's going to be disbarred if he lied. So that's why I'm saying it's one. It's an extreme. If he lied, he's he's going to lose his license. So thank you for that analysis because that helps me kind of 
come down on the side of these videos probably exist. May, oh. Maybe they do, but let's, let's, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. All right. But let's go some more. So the videos exist. Yeah, because why did Homeland Security go in? Homeland Security. Because they want the extra footage. See, the only thing is Lil Rod got the recording shit himself with his phone and shit. You know what I'm saying? So he got his own little proof. But Diddy got them other cameras in there. So that's why Homeland Security probably went in there. Uh, also, the Tupac shit and all the other shit that they're not talking about. He went in. They retrieved all the videos of, of Sean Combs' home from Los Angeles. See? to Florida. Los Angeles, he's being represented by Sean Hawley, who's an attorney, very famous attorney. We used to work with Johnny Cochran. And uh, and he's got Aaron Dyer, who's a former AUSA, Assistant United States Attorney from New York. He's got top-notch people working for him right now. And what happened was Homeland Security was able to obtain the warrant. And I'll tell you why. Because Mr. Jones said he has irrefutable evidence, which means there's no doubt his lawyer watched the evidence he has the evidence, and this is the goods that allegedly they have on him. They supposedly have evidence of him acquiring the use and distribution of ecstasy. Cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, mushrooms. He says there's evidence on the video of displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms. He claims that Mr. Combs provided laced alcohol to minors and sex workers, which is another nice way of saying prostitutes, at the homes in California, New York, and the Virgin Islands and Florida. Yeah, they said he, he had liquid cocaine. You have your own liquor and liquid cocaine? And the complaint itself says, and listen to this, quote, the writer, who was the lawyer, spoke to several employees of the yacht rented by Mr. Combs in the Virgin Islands who personally witnessed... Karam, uh, Ms. Karam is the chief uh, executive officer for M M Mr. Combs. They witnessed Ms. Karam instruct her staff. Listen to this, Tony. They have uh, allegedly employees, several employees that heard Karam, and it's spelled K-H-O-R-R-A-M. I think her name is Kareem. Uh, that she instructed Brendan Paul, the drug mule, Frankie Santella, and Moy Bon, who is, I think, in charge of security, or one of the head, head people over there, to spike bottles of champagne with ecstasy. Yeah. Where did I find that information? Page 873 of, of the- Of Mr. Jones' complaint. Oh. Yeah, Miss Christina Karam, Christina Karam is being l l sort of held out as the Ghislaine- The Ghislaine Maxwell. Yeah. To his Jeffrey Epstein. Right, so they're saying that that she is uh, to, to Puff Daddy, or sorry, Sean Combs, to what Ghislaine Maxwell was to- um, Epstein, basically she knew what was going on and she's grooming all these people to do what makes Sean Combs happy. Again, wow. these are all allegations of Mr. Combs and is innocent until proven guilty. So, but, so is Miss Karam. Absolutely. Everybody is all we're doing now. We're just, we're just talking and speculating and guessing what's happening. So then his son, Christian Combs, allegedly Sean Combs son was drugging and sexually assaulting women. You know, that's what it says. Uh -huh. Then there's another rapper by the name of Young Miami, pretty rapper. He's a cousin or an assistant, uh -huh. supposedly was sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. Then the, there's salacious uh, allegations that actor and award-winning, uh, Academy Award-winning actor, um, Cuba Gooding Jr. was sexually harassing and assaulting uh -huh. Mr. Jones. Uh -huh. And there's pictures, weird pictures of Cuba Gooding, uh -huh. uh, you know, unusually close to another male, Mr. Jones. Uh, what appears well, to be a an video allegedly. Yeah. And just, we, just, we've seen screen grabs of the video in the complaint. Yeah. But to my sort of, uh, I'm, I, why aren't the most lewd portions of that video screen grabbed in the complaint? Are they trying to kind of make it a little bit safer to look at for the courts? It's, it's, it's a great question. I, I, it, it, Cuba Gooding is sitting pretty close, but not too close for comfort. I mean, it's like, but if there's a video, they'll probably produce the video later. And again, it's sexual. You know what sexual assault means? It is assault means that there's an unwanted uh, touching. So if I put my hand on your leg, Tony, and you know, you don't want me to do that. That could be assault. Does that make sense? It's an unwanted touching in the eyes of the law, right? And so, yes, that per perfectly makes. Sense. And and the other thing is, uh, you got to remember something about Cuba Gooding. He actually pled guilty to groping a girl lady in in Manhattan. So he's got a, you know a few skeletons in his closet, which makes it more believable. Does that make sense? Did he ever plead guilty to groping a man? 
No, uh, I, then no, it doesn't necessarily make it more believable. To me. Well, he can't be bisexual. I'm just saying he can and he may be, but evidence of one is not evidence of the no, other. No, but it, it's prior bad conduct. It's something that could be used in the court of law. I don't know if you know this, but if he ever gets charged again, they could say that you've done this before. It's a prior bad act. It's a fair point. Here's the picture of Cuba, just so we're looking at it. Yeah. Sitting with Mr. Jones in the studio, red light, romantic. Very romantic. Knows? Marvin Gaye is probably playing in the background. <laughs> uh, we don't know, but we haven't seen the video. We've yeah. seen screen grabs. I mean, but look, look, look at the way he's looking at uh, Ronnie Jones. Oh, right. I, I'm sorry. I just, it's a little too romantic for me. It's what if Ronnie was participating? Why are you all close on me like that? You ain't even no artist. Why you listen to the music? You an actor, ain't you? Like, why is you? He's a little too chummy, chummy there. Look, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just, he, I'm, just I'm just pointing out. That he looks a little predatory. I'm not gonna lie. In this exact screen grab, he's like uh, arching over him. His arm is over him. His face is getting. Closer. It, you know, but it could be a buddy, buddy thing. You know, I get drunk and I put my hands around. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You know? I do this with my guy friends yeah. sometimes because we're just like talking smack or drinking and just having a good time and giving each other love hugs. And sometimes, as you know, in cultures like in the Armenian culture, we like to some guys kiss other guys. It doesn't mean you're, you know, you're salting the other guy right that doesn't mean you're gay right i'm just kidding we don't kiss in that way. <laughs> on the cheek on the cheek yeah on the cheek. i'm just saying sometimes some cultures are affectionate you put yes. your arm on it doesn't just because kuba gooding jr is doing that it doesn't necessarily mean that he was acting in a predatorial way but rodney or but rodney's claiming that rodney jones's claim is that cuba gooding jr is attracted to him and is sexually making unwanted advances right. and we're seeing here a photo of a yacht and it's a, a, apparently there's a whole video of that i haven't yeah. seen it but that could be an interpretation that he's using as a strategy to put pressure to you know to have uh sean combs settle the case yeah, it's also not Sean Combs. It's like you're in a case against Sean Combs, and you're like, but also Cuba Gooding did this to me, and you should have known that Cuba was right. going to do this to right. me. It was on your boat that Cuba did right. this to me. And also, your cousin's cousin, Young Miami, she sexually assaulted me. She pushed me into the corner in the bathroom and forcibly tried to pleasure me. Wait, with wait oral forcible sex. oral sex? You know, Have I'm, you ever heard of that? We hear about it. It's a harder one to believe. How does a guy get forced into oral sex? Yeah. You just, all you have to do is zip up your pants and walk away. For me, I think I, a little bit LOL'd out loud reading the complaint at that portion. Like I, you had me with, I could, I could conceive of there were guns in the house. Mm -hmm. Now it's a separate question. Were they unregistered? Were they illegal? Were they being trafficked or were they legally held? Separate question. I could conceive that there were girls in the house, maybe yeah. even sex workers, maybe even underage. That's a problem. Sure. Um, Oh, drugs in the house. I mean, probably every party house has a lot of drugs. Wouldn't you say? I don't know that that necessarily means Fair. distribution Fair. or trafficking. You, you have to acquire them if you want them in your party house. Yeah. Right. Sure. But then force of this is where I, they kind of lost me was like, also young Miami, that beautiful hot lady or whatever performer. They, they said she was an employed sex. Right. Right. right pushed me into the bathroom and cornered me and pulled off my pants. And as I was peeing, as I was peeing, tried to give me oral pleasure. Yeah. And I yelled and screamed and pushed her away, but she wrestled me down and forcibly tried to have intercourse with me. It's something like that. I, right? It sounded like she wanted to basically give him oral and he didn't want that. And, and that then, but she kept chasing him and pursuing him and physically forcing him to do something. I'm like, what? I, you know, really? That, that's a weird one that is strange and you know what's also interesting is a little rod likes to drop a lot of names in a lawsuit he insinuated that chris brown the famous singer um that r&b uh, chris brown uh, was consorting with underage girls also and that's page eight of 73 so he drops names he drops chris brown's name why is he dragging him into this complaint just just more high celebrity power to the company. in my opinion more attention you want to know my opinion because he wants chris brown he wants kuba gooding to give uh, sean combs a call and say and be you like, better bro. have been settled this case right now bro. i'm gonna be taking you down big time big time get my name out get of the news yep. mm -hmm. wow. absolutely so it's a strategy it's a legal a complete strategy, strategy. it could be a shakedown it is a shakedown it, I, I call this the kitchen sink lawsuit they're throwing everything in the kitchen sink and seeing what sticks so that's a part of it and then furthermore it talks about the shooting incident that involved Combs and his son, which, in my opinion, this is where 
I think the feds are going to get involved. The feds, don't, a, the, is, feds, the feds don't really get involved in Hollywood parties and, and drugs. And yes, they do a little, not the feds, but states get involved in that. The feds get involved when there's like, you know, interstate commerce, transportation, and even that, you know, it, it could be state. But here's the thing. When, according to the lawsuit, uh, Combs' uh, young son, I don't know if it was uh, King or the other one, they were, they, oh, Justin, I'm sorry, it was Justin. Justin Combs, who's Sean Combs' uh, son, had a fight, an argument with Mr. G in the complaint. We don't know who Mr. G is. They were at a recording studio in L.A. called, well, let me get the I don't know what the recording studio is, but allegedly that there was a fight going on. And listen to this. This is where it gets very, very interesting. Mr. C Jones. CRS Studios in L.A. Right, yeah. CRS Studios. So allegedly, um, Mr. Rodney Jones claims he was two feet away from the bathroom when he heard gunshots ringing out. Then he recalls multiple gunshots. And for the people that are watching the podcast, it's on page eight of 73 of the, of the complaint. According to Mr. Uh, Jones, Rodney but they're all Jones, hanging out at the studio. They're all hanging out. Also, I remember reading that there was a little bit of an argument or there was a disagreement between Sean Combs, his son and what was his name? G. Mr. G. Mr. G or G? Yeah, Mr. G. So there was a little bit of an altercation, I remember reading, a, a bit of a disagreement, and then yeah. they went to the bathroom. Yeah, and then when they went to the bathroom, uh, basically what happened was, you know, there's gunshots that came out uh, that he heard, and then when the door finally opened, uh, Mr. Jones, Little Rod, claims that his son and Sean Combs exited, and then he saw... G, Mr. G, lying on the restroom floor, and he was in the fetal position, meaning he was curled up, he was holding his stomach, and he was bleeding out of his leg slash hip area. I'm going to make a bold prediction right now. I'm going to guarantee you, Tony, Mr. G will be subpoenaed. And if Mr. Oh, he, he lived? Yeah. That wasn't a murder? It was just no. a shooting? I was so mistaken. No. I thought he died. No, oh. and they lied. They they had the security. Moy Bond said that <clears throat> he was shot outside by drive-by shooting. Moy Bond apparently had connections to the police, so they believed him. So he distracted him. By the way, uh, Little Rod, Mr. Jones, sp explicitly says that Sean Combs came and told him to tell the police that the shooting happened outside, out front the studio. I believe you're right. That's even crazier, right? That's like that's even a bigger allegation. If you believe in Lil Rod, if you believe in Mr. Jones, yes, he's saying, "Dude, I was a foot away from the wall. These guys had an altercation. They went in the bathroom and freaking shot this kid. I don't know who pulled the trigger, if it was Sean Combs or his son, but they went in there. They came out, and that G was shot, right? And then Sean Combs allegedly told Mr. Jones, Sean Combs, I'm sorry, told Mr. Jones. You better tell the police this happened as a drive-by shooting outside the studio, out front. You're 100% right, Tony. I don't get this. That's on page, uh, you, you hit the nail on the head. That's on page 9 of 73, Mr. Combs. It says, literally, Mr. Combs gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced Mr. Jones to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. Okay, am I so stupid? Wouldn't the simplest forensic analysis be able to determine whether the person was standing outside when they were shot at high speed yeah. by a car moving versus yeah. at close range in the bathroom? Yeah. You would think. You would think. But the problem is I think they cleaned up the bathroom. So they, were, they bleached it up and they cleaned up the whole crime scene. So the police had nothing to, to say that they were lying. So I could, and G, I don't think G told him that, that Sean Combs shot him. I don't think G said Sean Combs shot me. I think he was complicit also. We haven't heard whether Sean, Com I haven't heard from anyone and we haven't read any witness statements yet that say who pulled the trigger. Right. But we have one eyewitness account so far, which is Mr. Jones saying they went in the bathroom, the three of them, right. Sean Combs, his son, and this victim. And then there was a gunshots or multiple gunshots. Yeah. And then the victim G was on the ground bleeding. Yeah. And there, a small crowd gathered. Yes. And no one helped. And that crowd, according to the lawsuit, the lawyer spoke to that crowd and he's got their statements, Tony. He spoke to them and they got corroborating witnesses. That's why I'm telling you. Really? Because I was just about to say, where's the crowd? It, well, according to page 10 of 73, they got him. Wow. They got him. That's big. If that Huge. crowd is there and they can corroborate this happen, and if he truly, Sean Combs, did go to Mr. Jones and say, you need to tell the police 
this happened outside on the sidewalk, right. not in the bathroom. Yeah. That's fuck, that's bad for and that's, Sean. That's a, part, that's a part of the Rico predicate. That, but can we? Can I try to give him the biggest benefit of the doubt? Sure. Steel man him. We should. So maybe he didn't say that, and Rodney Jones is lying. He could be. He never said, tell the police this. Could be. And maybe he w did go in the bathroom, but he didn't shoot anybody. The problem with that is, according to the lawsuit, and there's an ethical standard, the lawyer saying he corroborated it with several witnesses. So it's a done deal. Corroborated that Sean Combs tried to actively cover up the shooting after the fact and tried to make everybody lie to the police after the fact. It doesn't say exactly that, but that's my understanding. That's what we're assuming. Yeah. What's really extra bad, RJ, and let's look at this. I know you've seen it, but for everybody with us, look at the bathroom photos. I yeah. Mean, I mean, little Rod puts photos in his civil complaint. Yeah, by the way, the, that crime scene to me means they cleaned it up. There's no way somebody would get shot and there'd be just blood splatter here and there. Some You could see the 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 towels. You could see the the blankets. You could see somebody clean up the crime scene. You So you think there would be way more blood than this? Oh, yeah. Multiple gunshots in the bathroom at close range. I mean, there's a pool of blood on the ground, a little bit on the toilet, but you're right. You know, take a look closer. You'll see the you'll see the white uh, towels have blood on them. You'll see the brown towels have blood. Somebody's cleaning up. Mm -hmm. So the yeah, look at all those towels in the trash. So the blood, the, the it's not consistent with 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 somebody that got shot in the hip area or the stomach. It would be a lot more blood. I, somebody cleaned look, it up. There's a pant leg or an entire shorts or pants just yeah. laid over the toilet. Why yeah. would that be there? Is it to cover something or was it? Who knows? I don't know. To, I, while they were trying to administer first aid or life saving. Uh, don't know. Mr. Jones claims the small crowd formed. Nobody did anything, and he was the one to jump into action and finally help get. The shooting victim up and out and into an ambulance yeah mr jones claims that <laughs> the clothing he wore that he, he said that he has the clothing of mr g and it's in a lawsuit and he believes he has the stains uh that will show the dna belongs to mr g wow. and um he, you know mr mr jones also claims that throughout living with mr combs as you know he's living with mr combs during this recording you know Sean Combs had a weird way of working. He invited people to live with them for a while. Maybe that's normal and maybe that's not normal. He did that with uh, Justin well, Bieber. Well, I, I would definitely say it's not normal necessarily. Especially with Justin Bieber. He did that with Justin Bieber. He did it with Usher. He he went to, there's a camp called uh, Puff Daddy's Flavor Camp. It is normal for recording albums. I've many okay. friends and bands who will go live in a little sure. mansion on the beach yeah. and record an album or yeah. Or, or a barn and a farm somewhere just to be isolated together as a yeah, crew. But, yeah, but here's producing the, an album, right? He was thing. producing an album. Yeah, but, but for a 15-year-old and a 13-year-old? Well, who was that? Norm? Who was Usher? That? No. And Justin Bieber? They were 15 and 13. Is that normal for, for a parent to just say, take my kid and, and you go with some stranger to record albums? Right, that's a little Michael Jackson vibes-y a little bit. And where are the parents regard? Where's Usher's mom and dad? I, I, I mean... I, I, Again, to steal, I like to speak to them to steal man on the Sean Combs side of it. He's a, he's a, he's spotting prodigy talents and he wants to pull them as close into his orbit as that's possible. That's fine. But why do you have to actually go live with the guy? Why can't you go to the recording studio and just record? Mm -hmm. That's a separate issue, but so th th that's a little weird, but Mr. Jones is claiming that while he was living with Mr. Combs, that he was the victim of un unsolicited and unauthorized groping mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. touching of his anus yeah how about that how about it so that's pretty detailed and any claims but, that but but have you ever had a guy friend that was that annoying guy that would walk by and just flick you in the private parts and it would hurt? no i have it hurts no I you never had like that annoying dude at the barbecue who walks by is like what's up bro hell no just gives you a little flick just like to so that you're like ah oh, you got you gotta it, you gotta change your friends I, I gotta get you're absolutely new not wrong i but. mean if you're being hit in the genitals for jokes I, I i think that's strange i that's never happened to me there's I, definitely guys that'll flick you here and there as a joke what or uh but but he, this was a little bit more like uh to be explicit he complained about being touched in the anus yeah in the anus, but as but through as, pants or whatever yeah so it's like do you have you ever slapped a guy friend on the butt for fun like hey psh, nice one on the butt of course okay you Maybe during, I haven't. I have. I mean, I've never. I've never during basketball, it. they make a great play. Or if I just see him and I haven't seen him in a while, nothing. Whatever like, happened to the high fives? Why are you going for the ass? Sometimes high fives are like almost too formal, or like I don't know. It's like you're just messing with each other. It's just physical 
rough housing. What about, what about the pounding? No more pounding, chest bumping? Pounding? What are we talking about but here? Why, why do you have to spank somebody in the ass to let them know that you're happy? I feel like pounding. I don't know, pounding, know. body chest? I don't know. Hug? That's more intimate, the pounding. <laughs> okay. Listen, <laughs> I'm really trying to steel man it a little bit. Honestly, is he just a touchy-feely dude? He could be. You know, like touchy feely, like, oh, hey, what's up? What's going on? Could and, be. And, and I want to, while we're on this issue of touchy feely, mm -hmm. did you see the video going around online about where he sees Justin Bieber in the yes. side of a road? And then he like talking to him and people are like, Sean Combs is checking Justin Bieber for a wire. Have you seen that video? I did see that one. I'm going to show it to you. But but I, I've, I've seen other videos of him doing weird things like him touching Mike Tyson while he's on Arsenio Hall and he lifts. Mike Tyson takes Combs' hand and literally moves it away from him. I and you love see that, that you brought that up. We're going to debunk and, that and, one. And, and I'm going to debunk that. You're going to debunk it? I'm going to debunk it. All right. And of yeah, course, I'm like, a massive. I feel, like, I feel like his hand was Mike Tyson was just showing his jury. That was that. But. It did. It definitely looked like that he was checking just to be for a wire. If Joe Rogan fan, and I yeah. did see that clip on the Rogan podcast. Okay. And I normally I would have they would have debunked it, but somehow they didn't catch it. It slipped past them. So I'm going to debunk it. Yeah. Now. Well. Okay. So well, let's look at Justin Bieber and Sean okay. Puffy Combs running into each other somewhere, hanging out. Yeah. Everybody's saying, or a lot of people online are saying, look at the way he is touching Justin Bieber's chest. He's kind of tapping him down, yeah. looking for a wire. Look at him. Look. Hey, bro, you got a wire? Yeah, look. Let me check here. Let me check there. Now you look clean. Okay, now I'm going to tell you something. Now that I know you don't have a wire, I'm going to tell you something. Okay, good. We're out. That's what people are saying. Let's That's very interesting. Let's look at it again. Let me see that again. Here's what I see. Can I debunk? How about a guy who's touchy-feely, and when he talks to his buddies, he messes with their shirt? And for, for in order to emphasize, he touches you in different places. You know, that interpretation could be anything. I, I'm going to give him a pass on that one. I, I am too. Bill Clinton famously would put his hand on people's shoulder to emphasize the point he was making. Exactly. To emphasize. It was like That's he was lauded, lauded, what's the word? As a, as a strategic, amazing body language expert. Like he would put the hand on the shoulder, maybe even move it a little. It's emphasizing physically. Yep the point that they're making. And here I see Sean Combs not checking for a wire. I see I him like, I you. see him talking really intimately and closely with his friend, this other artist, Justin Bieber. And just right. in such an intimate way that you could only do with someone that you're tight, literally messing with the guy's shirt, pinching a little bit of cloth. Like, Hey, what's up? Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think that's, do you remember when there was a, you know, people make, Big deals out of nothing. Do you remember touching what, him with his knuckles? He touches. It's they're just emphasizing the dialogue that they're having. That's there's all. There's a lot of touchy feely people. Do you remember when Biden was running for president? They had a whole bunch of clips with him smelling girls' hair. Yeah. And they said, he, you know, that was creepy. Yeah. He, you could make something out of nothing on the internet. You, you know make that. Something out of nothing. Yeah. Let's quickly go to Tyson. Tyson. Okay. It's right here. I pulled it up because I, I I'm so happy you brought it up. And here it is. Tyson. And then watching them. Yeah, including yeah. somebody named Stevie J. Uh, yeah. I believe he's a record producer. And then his knowledge of Mr. Jones' admiration of Stevie J to groom and entice Mr. Jones to engage in homosexual activity. Is that BS? I don't know. It could be. Mr. Mr. Jones says he's a straight Christian man. Right. He says he's a straight Christian man. So, again, you know, take it for what it is. And uh, Otherwise known as gay. I'm just okay. Total joke. Of course. <laughs> and then, uh, Mr. Stupid joke. Mr. Combs. Mr. Combs went so far as to share a video. Okay, just listen to this. He's sharing a video with his lawyer of Stevie J. I'm. I'm apologize. I'm just reading for the complaint of anally penetrating a Caucasian male without a condom. And there's a photo of it inside of Stevie J. Um, I have it. I'm gonna pull it up pull right it up. here. Um. <clears throat> And it does, doesn't this beg the question of where did this photo come from? Well, it came probably from the videos of his house, secret videos, secret videos. And apparently he had, uh, I don't know if you know that Combs had videos everywhere, like Epstein uh, uh, inside his house, in the bathrooms everywhere. So that's, that's the problem that I have for Mr. Combs. You know, if they go through thousands of hours of videos, there's going to be something on there. 
I mean, not all of this, Tony, uh, let's just say 99% of it is BS. If there's 1% that's true, I'm sorry to so say but, Sean Combs is in trouble. It sounds like it. If it's 1% truth in this, he's in trouble. Right. That's 1%. Right. Again, some of the charges you and I kind of scoff at, like a female forcing right. him into oral that's, sex. That and, seems weird. But, but just little, one. It's very different than if the genders were reversed, um, obviously. But then there's all these other ones. And now um, this allegation that he has secret cameras hidden all throughout his homes. And through those secret cameras, Sean Combs obtained footage of Stevie J and another man having intercourse. Here's the screen grab from that. It's kind of graphic. And it could uh, but here it is. And this is yeah. one of the screen grabs that was in Mr. Jones's complaint. Yeah. So in his civil complaints, a series of screen grabs, but he obviously claims, hey, I have this entire video. And his lawyer, as you said, corroborates, dude, we have the video. Allegedly. Let's keep using the word allegedly and give Mr. Combs the benefit of doubt. But these are all allegations, right, Tony? We don't know that. These are allegations. My question yeah. is, if this indeed is a screen grab from such a video, is this from a hidden camera? Well, I don't think Stevie J wanted him to be recorded having sex with another man. I don't think so either, but I have no way of knowing yeah. one way or the other whether I, they're I, making a tape. And Stevie J has come out, I believe, in his defense and said it's complete nonsense and I think is going to take uh, legal retaliatory action. Against Pop, uh, Sean Cole. Yeah, so I, I want to be fair to all the parties. They have Everybody has denied it. Young Miami's denied it. Stevie J has denied it. Everybody's okay, but denied it. knowing what we know now yeah. at this moment, it's not inconceivable that these were hidden cameras. Could be. And so sh the allegation from Mr. Jones is that Diddy gave this video to him and said, Hey, check it out. This is what I got on Stevie J. J. Look what he's into in trying to entice Mr. Jones into some kind of a homosexual relation. Well, miss, and, and not only that, but according to the indictment, uh, excuse me, the complaint, according to Rodney Jones, Mr. Combs allegedly told Jones, quote, this is a normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. End quote. Meaning that, if you want to be in the business, you have to, uh, you know, pay your dues, sexual right. dues. Right. And this isn't the first time we've heard about that kind of level of corruption in the entertainment. Harvey business. Weinstein. Mm -hmm. Perfect example. Yeah. That was more in the movie side of things, but yes. Yes. Certainly. Harvey. Music as well. You hear, you hear about, how about, how about, how uh, about R Kelly? Same thing with R Kelly. They allege that he, you know, used young artists, um, allegedly married Aaliyah when he was 15. There's, this is a part I think of the culture. In, in the in the Hollywood recording industry, I think there's a lot of people that are being taken advantage of. I don't have any proof of that. It just seems like that to me. Doesn't it seem like that to you, Tony? Yes, I think that when you have people that get too powerful and have too much money, a lot of it coming from sort of this creative ego that they have where they are able to put out hits that people do respond to and get millions of um, sales and they make shit tons of money. It does seem to um, help inflate the ego quite a bit sure. and almost create a maniacal kind of megalomaniac type of personality. It doesn't always happen. Some people stay super humble. Absolutely. In amazing success. Um, I don't think Warren Buffett is doing this kind of stuff. Well, he's not in the entertainment. He's industry. not in the I'm only talking about the, I, he's not entertainment. Yeah. But in the entertainment business, um, it surely seems on the music side specifically that um, the partying, there's like an exponential acceleration of partying. And then to keep the party going, you got to do even crazier stuff next time. And to keep people around you saying, this guy's parties are the craziest. You got to do even crazier stuff next time. There's certain like inflation of things you do, things you say, drugs you use, maybe violence that gets into it and things inflate. And it seems like it's gotten... In this case, if we believe this, that these parties got out of control, like out of control, that were there minors there and were they drinking champagne and was it laced with ecstasy without their knowledge? That's like we just went many levels deep in culpability. Yeah. And not only that, but there's weird sexual shenanigans is claiming that Mr. Jones, um, you know, Mr. Combs and Fort informed Mr. Jones that he had to engage in having sex with rappers Meek Mill, Usher, and Stevie J. So he, he dropped those names. Meek Mill is another rapper. Uh, and supposedly Mr. Combs promised to make sure that Mr. Jones would win the producer of the year at the Grammys if he basically engaged in homosexual activity. Mm -hmm. um, 
again, just a pattern of coercion, if you believe it, to try to force or coerce or to persuade somebody into a sexual that's situation. Not a crime. Even if, even if Combs did that, he said, you better go have homosexual sex. That's not rape. You did it consensually. Yeah. You may have a civil lawsuit, but that's not a crime. Yeah. The crime in this so far, what I flagged is the Mr. G gunshot. So far, that's what I'm really concerned about. And the possibility of minor transportation in the airplane. That's what I'm concerned about right now. That's what the federal government is concerned about. Right. Yeah. Now. Those minors being trafficked around, moved from here to there, Correct. Just, just even put on a plane and flown to somebody's house or a yacht or a yacht. I guess it's worse if they're crossing state lines. Cause that's now federal. Correct. But even if they didn't cross state lines, they just went down to the city and pulled up some quote unquote sex workers, yep. prostitutes, or just eager girls who are willing to do. Come overnight, it just look like this. 